to all the different uh, heads of departments and representatives of each department. Uh, pleasant good morning. Um, is everybody there? So it took a while because I had a briefing with the Ease of Doing Business ARTA group, the Anti-Red Tape Authority. Um, and uh, it took a while before we ironed out some of the issues and uh, we're ready to ha to call the meeting to order. So good morning, everyone. The joint public hearing of the Committee on Civil Service and Committee on Trade, Commerce and Entrepreneurship on SB number 1844 entitled An Act Authorizing the President to Expedite the Processing and Issuance of National and Local Permits, Licenses and Certifications is now called to order. Uh, of course, I'd like to again recognize the presence of our colleagues, Senator uh, Villar, Senator Bongo, Senator um, Gachalian, who was uh, logged in earlier as well. And um, I'd like to now ask uh, the committee secretary, uh, Ma'am Jane Arzadon, to acknowledge our resource persons and guests for today's hearing. Please go ahead, uh, Ma'am Jane. I can't hear you so well, Jane. Um, Thank you, Senator Zubiri. Um, for the record, uh, for the Committee on Civil Service, Subcommittee on CSB and 1844, joint with the Committee on Trade, we have the following resource individuals. For the government, representing Secretary, uh, the Office of the President, Director Eugelio Amado Saban. From the Office of the Ombudsman, we have Justice Ediberto Sandoval. From the Civil Service Commission, we have Executive Director Arthur Luis Florentin, together with Attorney, Attorney Alma Foron. From the Department of Trade and Industry, we have Director Lillian Salonga. From the Department of Finance, we have Commissioner Jave Paul Francisco. From the DNR, we have Engineer Larry Herades, Attorney and John Terra. From the BIR, they will send, be sending uh, your, your honor a representative later. From the NEDA, or the National Economic Development Authority, we have Assistant Director Sapin. Also from the ARTA, or the Anti-Red Tape Authority, we have representatives, Deputy Director General Attorney Perez. Deputy Director General Eduardo Brinas, Head Executive Assistant Attorney Janeline Gainza Tang, OIC Director Attorney Cheryl Sumagi, OIC Director Attorney Leonardo Tapia, Attorney Alexandria Martinez, and Attorney Janeline Rose Denosta. From the Bureau of Fire and Protection, we also have Director Jose S. Embang. From the Food and Drug Administration, we have Ms. Lynn May Balmes, as well as Ms. Florita Moraleja. From the Department of Agriculture, we have Attorney Benjamin Felipe Tabios Jr., Michael Andayog, as well as Ni Nilo Katada and Edemotenes Escoto. From the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, we have Attorney Benjamin Felipe Tabios Jr. From the Department of Energy, we have Mr. Arnel C. Antonio, together with Ms. Lisa S. Go and Ms. Julianne Cernal. From the Energy Regulation Commission, 
we have Commissioner Agnes Vicenta S. Torres de Benadera from the Department of Interior and Local Government. We have Under Secretary Rico Judge Echeverri. From the Governance Commission for GOCC or GCG, we have Attorney Irving Osena. From the Social Security System, SSS, we have Ms. Aurora C. Ignacio. From the Government Service Insurance System, or GSIS, we have the following. Attorney Lucio Yu, Jr. Attorney Giovanni Lin Kikoy Marin. VP Vilma Fuentes. From the Home Development Fund, Pagidi. They will be sending a representative later. From the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development, we have Secretary Eduardo Rosario, together with Attorney Angel Aguila. From the Human Settlements Adjudication Commission, or the formerly HLURB, we have Executive Commissioner Mel Zar Galici. From the Philippine Overseas Employment Agency, we have Administrator Bernard P. Olalia. From the Department of Justice, we have Assistant Secretary Nicolas Felix T. Together with State Council Rosario Cuevas. From the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation, we have President and CEO, Attorney Dante Gueran. From the business sector, we have the Chamber of Commerce Group with the President, no, the American Chamber of Commerce. We have Mr. John Forbes. From the Telecommunication Group, I'm sorry, they will be sending a representative later with regard to the Globe Telecommunications. On the Real Estate Developers Group, we have Ayala Land, represented by Attorney Mike Camero. Also, from the Real Estate Developers Group, we have from the SMDC, Mr. Carlo Alampay and Attorney Mena Ojeda. That is all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ma'am Jane. But before I move on, I would like to uh, acknowledge uh, the distinguished uh, minority floor leader, Senator Franklin Rulon. Sir, thank you for attending and joining us. Uh, we will need your help and your expertise in law to be able to shuttle this through. Um, we'd also like to um, ask everyone uh, to keep their mics on mute because there's feedback whenever there's one that is on. And it's very difficult to conduct uh, hearings when one is on. So uh, allow me to give a short opening statement uh, to put this in the proper premise, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, good morning to all our friends in government and uh, to all the invited guests. Welcome to this joint public hearing on SB number 1844. Last September 16, 2020, the president called for a meeting with the leaders of Congress, the Senate and the House of Representatives in Malacanang to discuss some pressing matters. I was invited by Senator Bongo to attend that. Unfortunately, uh, to my dear friend, I told him I was in Mindanao at the time and the, 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 the meeting was immediately the day after. So I had to beg off. But uh, the Senate President had attended, Senator Senate President Vicente Soto III and uh, uh, the part of the Senate representing us. Um, and in that meeting, Together in that meeting was the Speaker of the House, Speaker Alan Cayetano, together with the Majority Floor Leader um, Martin Romualdez, and of course, Senator Bongo was in that meeting. In that meeting, the President shared his frustration on the bureaucratic red tape, even in the midst of the pandemic. The delivery of much-needed interventions and responses, such as medical supplies, goods, infrastructure, was being saddled with a lot of bureaucratic tape. This, despite of the enactment, of Republic Act 11032, or the Ease of Doing Business and Efficiency of Efficient Government Service Delivery Act of 2018. I was the principal author of that measure, 
uh, in the uh, Senate, uh, being the chairman of the Committee on Trade and Commerce. We had high hopes that the passage of the EODB law, um, and uh, my, the question is what happened along the way? I could only surmise that the law is at the very least not being implemented properly, or our public servants in the bureaucracy have become callous or callous to the plight of the public and insist on doing things the old, slow, and bureaucratic ways, or are not afraid of the penalties that may befall them under Republic Act 11032, or maybe a combination of all these things. And on September 19, the Senate President, Senate President Soto, met with the Senate leadership through several Zoom meetings and discussed the, and the concern raised by President Duterte in the meeting. To respond to a call of the president to further trim down the bureaucratic red tape, especially during this time of pandemic and national emergency, the Senate leadership, that is the Senate president, the Senate president pro temp, um, Senator Ping Lakson, myself, the majority leader, and the minority floor leader gathered together and came up to file this bill, Senate Bill number 1844, to answer the president's call. Congress has actually foreshadowed the president's frustration. In Republic Act 11494, or the Bayanian 2 Act, we provided some of these powers to the president, such as the temporary suspension of requirements to secure permits, clearances, and licenses for the construction of telecommunications and internet infrastructure under Section 4, subparagraph double H, item 8 of the law. We have seen this slow pace of permitting and the construction of communication towers, especially now that we conduct ourselves in the new normal, where many transactions and businesses, including education, online selling, work from home, even congressional and Senate meetings, as we do now, are being done online and virtually. A reliable and fast internet connection has become essential, and internet and or Wi-Fi no longer is a want, but it's a necessary need. It's, it's become a need. Let me emphasize, though, that as worded in the bill, the authority of the president to suspend the requirements for national and local permits, licenses, and certifications, and to streamline and expedite the process of the issuance of such shall only be during the time of national emergency, not just during this COVID-19 pandemic, but other national emergencies in the foreseeable future. Last night, Mr. Mr. Uh, well, to my colleagues, no? Uh, to the, my dear colleagues, senators, together with uh, uh, our cabinet members and all those who are listening in from the government service, the president once again uh, showed his dismay, no, and frustration. So much so that he even mentioned of his re resignation, or he, he wants to sign out of sheer frustration. Today, I was bombarded by a number of um, uh, messages coming out from text uh, by our media. Uh, and I would like to share you these uh, questions. Hi, sir. Can you comment? Due to the frustration of rampant, endless corruption, the president said he has offered to step down from your post. Your comment, sir. Sir, the president said he would be willing to appear before Congress to discuss how they could fight corruption, how to improve the ease of doing business law. Your comment, sir. These are the questions of media asked to me today, early morning. So as author of the ease of doing business law, I am quite frustrated why our law has not uh, been very fruitful. And I had a meeting earlier this morning with ARTA Director General Jeremiah Belgica, and I will also recognize him later, to explain to us uh, what has been done so far uh, one year after the implementation. And I say one year after, the bill may be 2018, but the implementing rules and regulations were released almost a year after. It took a while because it took a while to appoint the, the Anti-Red Tape Authority Director General. And so they're in infancy. So uh, I actually mentioned today, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to the ARTA, that there must be a communications problem. Communications, number one, to the people and communications to the president. Number one, uh, I'm not sure if the people know that there really is an ease of doing business act and what is it all about. I mentioned when I passed the law, I had a big debate with the members of Congress, as well as the members of the cabinet, particularly uh, my dear, dear friend, Secretary Mon Lopez of the DTI. They wanted to retain ease of doing business. Ang sabi ko sa kanila, in practicality, baka hindi maintindihan ng masang Pilipino yung ease of doing business. Akala nila siguro pang negosyante yan. 
hindi naman uh, yung pang uh, uh, paninikil sa LTFRB, paninikil sa LTO, paninikil sa iba't ibang ayansa naman dyan sa gobyerno, baka hindi nila maintindihan, nakasali sila dito sa ease of doing business. I wanted the name actually as the Comprehensive Anti-Red Tape Law. That was supposed to be the 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 uh, the title of the measure, but I was prevailed upon by the Secretary of DTI together with our colleagues in the House because it is in compliance. The name of ease of doing business is in compliance with a lot of World Bank and uh, um, uh, other uh, financial institutions that give us higher credit rating. So I prevailed. So therefore, if you ask me, I think there is a communications problem with the people that we have such a law. Uh, that is supposed to protect them from this type of corruption, delays of permits, licenses. Pag ayaw sa mukha mo, eh, hindi ka bibigyan ng permit, papapalikin ka ng katakot-takot na ilang araw, etc., etc. All these provisions are in the law. And there's also, I think, I believe, a communications problem between ARTA um, and the President. And I mentioned this to Director General, DG uh, Jeremiah, and I said, you have to explain to the President the powers already included in the law. What is, uh, uh, of course, uh, violations of the law. And uh, maybe you could also explain to him what you have done in the meantime so that this law could be, uh, um, of course, properly implemented. Sometimes we can't blame also ARTA because, like, for example, if we are serious on corruption, then we should increase their personnel. Unfortunately, their budget was slashed by 40%. So... Uh, we're asking an agency manned by less than uh, 200 people, and I will ask uh, DG Jeremiah, they're probably less than 150 people. Uh, they only have four lawyers in the agency. Kailangan talaga nila ng bala. We can't ask these people to go to war, bibigyan mo sa kanila paltik. Kasi talagang suicide ang mission. So uh, we have to strengthen also uh, the uh, watchdog no? and uh, to make sure that they have the proper ammunition to fight this corruption. And of course, um, uh, the question is uh, also the power to suspend. I have argued many times, and I've said this many times, and together with the Senator, uh, minor Senate Minority Floor Leader, the power to suspend also lies in the hands of the President. So if the President shows sheer frustration that there are corrupt officials in government, he has the power to suspend from cabinet secretaries all the way down to uh, the clerks in these offices. Uh, that is in his mandate, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So um, you can see the sheer frustration no, that we are feeling now. I, as a author of the Ace of Doing Business, and uh, it seems that uh, it's not moving forward. And of course, I'm echoing the statements of the president last night and the previous uh, meetings that he had with the Congress. So uh, we now will tackle the the teeth of the measure. But before we do that, I would like to um, recognize my colleagues um, who are logged in, maybe for the, uh, the further comments and suggestions as well, before we recognize the resource speakers. Um, I believe in the list, the first to log in was Senator Villar. So Senator Villar, maybe ladies first, after which was Senator uh, Bongo, and then Senator Gachalian, and then, of course, our minority floor leader. So, uh, Senator Villar, you have uh, the floor, please. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman, our colleagues in the Senate, and of course, our resource person. Uh, I really believe in the ease of doing business in the Philippines because I come from a, a business family, and we believe that uh, we should be facilitated so that we can employ people, we can uh, pay taxes on our income and so forth. But I just want to make a manifestation with regards to the inclusion of the Environmental Management Bureau in this list. You know, uh, the, Envir the Environmental Management Bureau of the Department of Environment and Natural Resources is in charge of giving ECC to reclamation project. I don't think uh, the reclamation project should be included in facilitation, facilitating the ease of doing business. The rec reclamation of Manila Bay in Paranaque, Las Piñas, and Bacoor will destroy our legislated protected area, uh, the Las Piñas-Paranaque Wetland Park. 
It is one of the seven in the Philippines chosen as wetland of international importance by the Ramsar list. Okay. It is the home of 35 hectares of mangrove forests and 84 species of birds. If we destroy the natural flow of water, it will destroy the 35 hectare mangrove forest, which is the spawning ground of fishes in Manila Bay, supporting the livelihood of 300,000 fisher fox in Manila Bay. And at the same time, it will cause flooding to our city, which is uh, populated by 630,000 people. Alam nyo, yung aming city is the home of the middle class families in Metro Manila. Yung mga tao doon, binili nila ang bahay nila, hinulugan nila ng 25 years sa uh, uh, SSS, GSIS, and Pag-ibig. So it took them 25 years to pay for their homes. Tapos mag-i-issue ka ng ECC, pababahain mo kami ng 8 meters, eh di nawalang lahat ang kabuhayan ng aking mga kababayan. Ito lang ang naipundar nila in their lifetime at ito ang ipamamana nila sa kanilang mga anak, ipababahain mo kami ng 8 meters. That is the findings of the former Public Works Secretary, Babe Singson, at my son. He told me during that time that I should not allow reclamation which will block our two rivers, the Paranaque River and the Las Piñas Zapote River. Kasi yung mga tubig namin, nanggagaling yan sa Cavite. Bumababa sa amin para pumunta sa Manila Bay. Pag yan ay naharang, ang paglabas niyan sa Manila Bay, the water will stay with us because mataas ang Cavite, the water will not go back to Cavite but will stay with us. So nakakaawa naman ang aming mga residents and <clears throat> and uh, this will destroy also our environment. If this bill will be passed into law without exception, edi eh lalo mag issue ng ECC yung EMB. Issue na nga ng issue ng ECC without consultation or without study. Eh gagamitin niya patong batas na to para lalo siyang mag-issue ng ECC para kami ay pabahain niya dito sa Las Piñas City as well as Bacoor and Paranaque. So I want to make this manifestation to say that not all the ease of doing business is good for everybody. We should choose what we should facilitate for the country. Kasi yung iba talagang it will require a lot of consultation and studies because it will destroy the lives of so many people. Yun lang po. Marami pong salamat at magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Thank you, uh, Ma'am Cynthia, the Chairperson of the Committee on Environment and Natural Resources. Uh, we take note of your manifestation, Ma'am. Thank you. But uh, just for the record, no, uh, for those listening, especially of government agencies, the ease of doing business doesn't mean that you have to give a yes approval to all, all applications, huh, ladies and gentlemen. It only means you have to answer either a yes or a no. Either you give the permit or not within a particular time. So if it is environmentally destructive, then you should take a stand that the, this permit should not be given. Ayan uh, ang dapat uh, mangyari dyan. I just po, want to po, yeah, answer that, uh, Mr. Chairman. If you centralize it with the president, hindi naman lahat alam ng president ang issues. At hindi niya kayang gawin lahat yan. So it will be delegated. So who will be delegated who can understand the issues of the local people? So yun lang ang question ko. So I guess we have to make exception to this because there are issues that will affect the lives of so many people and that should not be included in the ease of doing business. It should be studied very well so that uh, these things can be prevented. It is... Uh, my own experience, I have been fighting this reclamation for the last 20 years, uh, even as in the private sector. And when I joined as congressman of Las Piñas, and then now a senator of the Philippines, I'm so tired. I've been fighting this for the last 20 years. My God, you don't know the hardship that I have encountered. I even legislated the protected area because uh, there was an executive order issued 
by the president to protect that legislated protected area, but they did not honor it because it's just an executive order. So I have to go to Congress and legislate it to protect it because now it's illegal to destroy it. So I'm just making this manifestation so you would understand how difficult it is. I mean, it's okay lang yung mga simple permit, ganyan, ganyan. But these things that will affect the lives of so many people, it should be studied and it should be uh, done according to the law. Thank you very much. Uh, we take note of your manifestation, uh, ma'am. Senator Bongo, you're recognized, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, at sa lahat po ng mga resource uh, persons uh, and rito, maraming dyan sila, prosecutor Sandoval, sila attorney uh, Belica, uh, lahat ng secretary, secretary Ed, and to my fellow senators, uh, uh, Senator Gachalian, Senator Drillon, Senator Ma'am Sinja Villar, Senator Subiri. I would like to express my uh, full support to Senate Bill uh, Number no. One Eight Four Four, which seeks to authorize the President uh, during times of national emergency to suspend the requirements for national and local permits, licenses, and certifications, and to streamline and expedite the processing for the issuance of the same. Yung three days to one week lang dapat uh, dapat po ay uh, three days to one week lang po yun ang gusto niya mangyari kasi minsan inaabot ng ilang taon, ilang buwan, pinapatulog po yung mga papeles, eh, something is uh, wrong, ibig sabihin kung bakit pinapatulog. That means uh, there is inefficiency at best and corruption at, uh, at worst. Do not test this administration because we will see to it that you will be held uh, accountable. Ihiyain talaga kayo ni... Presidente. At uh, hindi lang po hiyain. Yayariin po namin kayo. Kung paanong yayariin, bahala na kayo mintindi. Katulad ng uh, sinabi ng ating Pangulo, we have to take radical uh, steps to cut uh, corruption and simplify uh, steps of doing business in the country. Suportado po ko po ang sinabi ng Pangulo na kailangan nating ayusin ang burokrasya sa gobyerno, hindi lamang upang improve ang ease of doing business sa bansa, kundi para labanan ang korupsyon sa gobyerno. Mas lalo na itong uh, kailangan, mas lalong kailangan ngayon to facilitate our economic uh, recovery in this time of pandemic. The President's policy against red tape is clear. I strongly believe that this measure will be instrumental in helping achieve these objectives. This will uh, go hand in hand with the uh, other measures which uh, the government has pursued to address this problem. In 2017, the president issued Executive Order 34 to streamline, expedite, and make more efficient processes involved in government projects and transactions. In 2018, the president also signed the Ease of Doing Business and Efficient Government Service Delivery Act to address the tedious and needless requirements in people's uh, transactions with the government. And uh, si Senator Zubiri po yata ang uh, sponsor nitong uh, batas na ito. The President, by uh, virtue of Memorandum Circular Number 34, has also ordered all government agencies in frontline services to respond to all public requests and concerns within uh, 15 uh, days. These steps undertaken only show the government's commitment and resolve to improving uh, government transactions and ensuring ease of doing business in the country. The proposed Senate Bill number 1844 is therefore a welcome development in this front, especially now that uh, we are facing economic uh, uncertainties uh, brought about by COVID-19. I also uh, support the President in saying that we need to revisit our laws and implementing rules and regulations. Kung kailangan uh, lagyan ng ngipin para sundin, gawin natin. Kung kinakailangan mas palawakin at uh, paigtingin ang uh, parusa sa mga lumalabag sa batas, uh, isa naman na ating layunin dito. May isa sa ayos ang uh, burokrasya at uh, mapaganda ang serbisyo sa tao. Totoo po yun, na willing daw po siyang masomon sa Senado. Sabi nga ni SP, wag naman uh, summon but uh, to be uh, invited po uh, as uh, one of the resource uh, persons. Willing po ang ating uh, Pangulo na i uh, po siya 
sa Kongreso para makapagsalita at gaano po kalalim ang uh, corruption sa ating uh, bansa. And uh, totoo po yun, in front of the military during one of the uh, command uh, conference, ay sinabi niya na gusto na niyang bumitaw dahil po yun sa corruption na talagang uh, exasperated na po ang ating uh, Pangulo sa tuwing meron po siyang naririnig na corruption sa ating uh, bansa. Pero si kayo lang po ang makakatulong, ang kapwa nating uh, Pilipino. Magtulungan po na tayo dito. At, uh, and finally, to the Filipinos and those in the private uh, sector, I encourage you to join the fight against corruption and help towards uh, having a clean and efficient uh, bureaucracy that provides the kind of service the Filipino deserve. Kung may mali, i-report po ninyo. Kung may nang, nang lalamang, huwag ninyong palagpasin. Kung may nananaman, nananaman tala at uh, naluloko, i-reklamo nyo po para mapanagot natin. At uh, together, let us demand accountability from those who ha have sworn to render public service with integrity and efficiency. Know your rights and demand the best because you deserve nothing uh, less. Isumbong nyo po, magtulungan tayo. Paano natin masubpo ito kung hindi tayo magtutulungan uh, sa isa't isa? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Senator Bongo. Uh, Ma'am Cynthia Villar, I think, wants to be recognized. Ma'am, please go ahead. You're on mute, Ma'am. Nakamute po kayo, Ma'am. I want to add something to Senator Bongo's comment. The President has always said, that there will be no reclamation of Manila Bay under his watch. He has said it many times. I just want to ask why this uh, EMB, that's why I want to remove that EMB, is issuing ECC in the reclamation of Manila Bay continuously. So is, is, he's not following the president. So that's why I'm questioning the inclusion of EMB in this ease of doing business. Because uh, we know very well that it's so cheap to reclaim Manila Bay. But if you are able to reclaim, you sell it at 500,000 per square meter. I am, we are a developer and we know that it only takes 10,000 pesos to reclaim Manila Bay. But if you have a reclaimed land in Manila Bay, you can sell it for 500,000 pesos. And uh, why are they continuously giving ECC here in Manila Bay when it will destroy the lives of so many people? I just want to make this manifestation. The president has always said that there will be no reclamation in Manila Bay under his watch. And he, and he is the one, he is the proponent of cleaning up Manila Bay. Why are we cleaning Manila Bay when we want it reclaimed? That's not consistent. I just want to make this manifestation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam. Uh, thank you, Ma'am Cynthia. Uh, would you like to answer, uh, Sen Bong? Or Lina? <laughs> Take note na lang. Dapat uh, sumagot niyan. It's uh, Department of Environment. Uh, si Secretary Simato. And of course, uh, EMB. Tama po. I agree with uh, Senator uh, Villar. Ay kung delikado po ito sa ating mga kababayan, eh, bakit nga po uh, nag issue sila ng uh, permit? So wala, yeah, pong, wala pong yeah. pipiliin dito, Ma'am uh, Cynthia. So lahat yeah. po ng uh, uh, may katiwalian ay uh, mananagot uh, dito. At uh, I'm sure baka itapon pa sa Manila Bay yung mga korak. Yes. Pwede yung dagdag doon sa reklame, ay sa ano, sa po, para maka, kinuhukay ninyo doon sa may lape ninyo. Para makatipid tayo sa, sa abono. Uh, Opo. Uh, but uh, may I make a suggestion, I'll make a humble suggestion to my dear colleague, Ma'am Cynthia. Uh, why don't you file a resolution and I will we will refer the resolution today to your committee and your committee can uh, do an investigation on that particular issue and we will support you, Ma'am Cynthia. Because this uh, hearing actually is for all the agencies of government, hindi lamang po sa EMB. But we take note of your manifestation, definitely. 
it. Maybe you will, uh, Mr. Chairman, you will facilitate the ACC also. <laughs> and it has many implications. You know, since I filed a petition for writ of Kalikasan in 2000 against this, and I went through the process of legislation, I have done my best to stop this. But every year, there is additional problem. <laughs> and every time we change administration, you have to do additional work. I'm just manifesting this because uh, 20 years is a long time to fight for this. Am I going to fight for this until I die and ask my children to fight for this? They will not stop it. There should be some decision on this because they will not stop every year. If you stop one, then another company will follow. Then another company will follow because it's so uh, profitable to do this. It's so profitable to do this. So it's just that uh, this is a manifestation of ex ex ano, parang, uh, ano na eh, pagod na because I've been doing this for the last 20 years. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. We take note of your manifestation, uh, ma'am. Okay, so next is uh, Senator Sherwin Gachalian. Senator? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for allowing me to give a brief opening statement. And thank you for filing this resolution because um, over many, many years, the first version of uh, anti-red tape was uh, to really fight red tape. But uh, we all know that uh, it was uh, lacking and wasn't enough. And then you spearheaded filing this piece of doing business law, Mr. Chair, uh, to uh, continue the gains of the first law. But then again, as you pointed, pointed out correctly, uh, it's still lacking. We're not reading it on the ground. Uh, like you, Mr. Chair, and uh, si Ma'am Cynthia and si Senator Bong, I was once a businessman. And uh, this is, the business community can attest that the gains are not enough for investment to flourish in our country. Uh, whether you're in manufacturing, you're in construction, whether you're in power, whether you're in retail, red tape is still the biggest elephant and the biggest um, uh, barrier to uh, increasing investments in our country. I, I, uh, I um, Mr. Chair, the creation of the ARTA is a good uh, step uh, to fight red tape, and I truly believe that we have the right person. Si uh, Director General Belica, matagal ko na huyan kilala, Mr. Chair, di pa abogado yan, kilala ko na huyan. Magaling yan, innovative, and most of all, a Christian. He's a lawyer, pastor, uh, Mr. Chair, kaya anes huyan, hindi ko tayo lulokohin. And he has all the good intentions uh, to fight red tape and to eliminate red tape. But Mr. Chair, without giving him the proper powers and tools, he will be inutile. Wala hong mangyayari ho. That's why I've read the position paper of uh, ARTA, and I agree in all of their recommendations, especially giving them subpoena and contempt powers, Mr. Chair. Alam naman mo natin itong mga government agency, papagalita mo, papasok dito sa kaliwang tenga, lalabas sa kanan na tenga, and bahala na. Uh, but giving them content and subpoena powers will give them big, a big stick and a whiplash to make sure that reforms will be implemented. So I support the, um, the recommendations, all the recommendations. In fact, uh, I read all of them of ARTA. And um, uh, Mr. Chair, I suggest if we can include all of these recommendations in your proposed bill so that once and for all, uh, red tape will be eliminated uh, in our country and investments will come in. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for this uh, opportunity and for your resolution and your, for, for your bill. Thank you very much, um, Senator Sherwin. Uh, compadre, thank you. Um, would the minority floor leader like to give a, a statement or should we start already with the resource persons? Uh, Senator Frank uh, Dulon, are you online? Um, yes, I'm online. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Uh, yes, I would want to go to resource persons, but just a quick response uh, with all due respect to my colleague, Senator Gatsalian. I do not think we should weaponize the law by granting all of these uh, uh, powers to uh, this uh, to this agency. Um, I, I have very serious reservations 
on the proposal I saw in the letter of art of uh, the anti red tape authority. I don't believe in that, uh, but we can elaborate on that later on, uh, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, and let's proceed with our resource persons. Thank you uh, to our Senate Minority Floor Leader. So let us proceed. Uh, to proceed, let us ask the main agency at hand, no, tasked to implement anti-red tape, as well as the ease of doing business law. Uh, let us recognize the anti-red tape authority, Director General Jeremiah Bel Belgica. Je Jeremiah, do you have a Director General? Do you have a? Can you have a presentation for us to explain first what you have done uh, in the past uh, year or so as a head of the agency, as well as. Uh, your recommendations, um, because it falls to your office, uh, these uh, questions of ease of doing business and anti-red tape. You're now recognized, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, to our honorable senators, uh, sa lahat po ng ating mga kasamahan sa gobyerno, sa pamamahala, kami po yung nagpapasalamat for this opportunity to be able to uh, look into this very important matter, especially during this time of pandemic. May I request that uh, my slide be uh, be presented? Uh, this is the same slide, uh, Mr. Senator, uh, that I that I showed you this morning. I would want to um, uh, show uh, show this, and siguro, Mr. Chair, uh, later if there are any other questions on the um, uh, their accomplishments. Uh, just going on quickly, sir, on what we have done uh, recently. Uh, without going to too much details, uh, next slide, please. Of course, uh, last year, next slide, please. Last year, the Ease of Doing Business uh, IRR was signed uh, last July 17. Uh, it was uh, attended nonetheless by the uh, chairman himself, the, sought, the author of the law, the father of Ease of Doing Business law. And uh, August 4, it became impl uh, fully implementable the ease of doing business law. So we are on our first year of full implementation. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide, please. So generally, the mandate of ARTA is uh, to oversee the implementation, the full implementation of the ease of doing business law. Next slide, please. I'll just um, reduce through this. Mr. Chair, right now we have 112 employees. Uh, fifth, uh, almost 60 of them are uh, plantillas, and the rest of them, uh, Mr. Chair, are in uh, uh, contract services. Uh, we are we were approved 208 plantilla positions, so uh, currently we are uh, in the process of capacitating still the uh, ease of the, the ARTA. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. First off is uh, when we uh, started, we saw that uh, the ARTA law, or the ease of doing business law, did present a lot of um, very powerful and potent uh, provisions for the streamlining of individual agencies, um, uh, for the creation of the citizen's charter, uh, the, the, the rationalization of their processes, um, Individual streamlining of government agencies are already mandatory. However, what we also saw, Mr. Chair, is the interagency red tape that also persisted. Nakita po namin na may, may mala, marami pong challenges at mga problema po sa mga iba't ibang ahensya na dulot po ng maraming taon na iba't ibang polisiya, practices na dumaan, na nakapatong-patong na po so kinakailangan i-unpeel po yan at, at an agency level pero nung tiningnan po natin in a sectoral level Mr. Chair uh, nakita ho natin na nagko-compound po ang problema ng red tape so uh, so ARTA uh, then uh, launched this uh, flagship program ang tawag po namin dito is program ni Himaya the national effort for the harmonization of efficiency measures of interrelated agencies or in which, Mr. Chair, we look at the whole of government or we look at uh, the red tape situation on a per sector basis. Uh, as an example, yung nakita po natin dito sa connectivity on the telcos, uh, yung iba't ibang ahensya na kailangan hong daanan, the housing and construction na patuloy ho namin pinagtutulungan ngayon po ni, ni uh, Secretary Del Rosario na uh, isa ho sa champion ng ease of doing business, 
yung creation po ng one stop shop is on the way yung food and pharmacology uh, yung starting po ng uh, pagkuha po ng mga license to operate sa FDA at pagre-register ho ng kanilang mga negosyo on the logistic sector nakita ho namin na napakadaming kinakailangan daanan na iba't ibang mga opisina uh, LGUs uh, PESA iba't ibang sticker po ang dinadaanan ng mga nasa logistics para lamang sila makadaan. So, uh, currently, kasama rin ho ito sa Nehemiah program at ang nakikita po namin, ang re-resulta na to is parang sort of a rapid rapid pass na isa lang ang pass po for, every, for, for all. And the power and energy, of course, um, through the uh, support na ho namin strongly with the EVOS, the uh, Energy Virtual One-Stop Shop, ay ang ARTA po ay na, na ay hindi ho kasama doon sa list ng mga members nung uh, nung uh, steering committee pero kami po ay naimbitahan na po kasi nakikipag-ugnayan po tayo diyan para po sa streamlining. So these five sectors uh, Mr. Chair uh, represents different many agencies per sector. So it, uh, ito po ay ating in-streamline and natapos po tayo doon sa interconnectivity sector um, doon po sa joint memorandum circular next slide please so, sa joint memorandum circular uh, 01-2020 next slide po next slide please Mr. Chair, um, on the, habang hinihintay po namin pag, paglipat po ng slide, there must be a, a lag. Uh, it took us almost 30 meetings uh, just to have this GMC uh, done um, with the different agencies. Nagpapasalamat po kami kasi sabay-sabay po yan. Nag, nagsama-sama po ang ARTA, the ICT, the ALG, the SHUD, uh, the OTR, through CAAP, FDA at uh, the OH. Tire-diretso po yung ating mga meetings and we were able to call it in, in the span of uh, 10 months po na mga uh, pag-streamline. So ang resulta po niya, next slide po. Ito po yung example ng program ni Himaya po no, na, na pwede hong, uh, na amin hong ginagawa rin ho sa ibang mga sectors ngayon. Next slide po. So, Mr. Chair, this is the first ever uh, digitally signed uh, joint memorandum circular na napirmahan po sa atin using the PNPKI uh, technology. So, this is a sample of what could be done through the Nehemiah program, sir. Uh, before, it was eight permits. Ang sabi ho ng mga telcos, it's more than 30. Now, it's just eight. Documentary requirements, 86. Now it's uh, 35 across 10 agencies. From the time of 241 to 16 uh, steps, uh, 16 days. Um, I understand with the passage po ng Bayanihan 2, marami pong mga permits. Most of the permits are already suspended. Pero in case na mag-lift na po yung Bayanihan 2, ay babalik po pa rin sila dun sa streamline process na po natin. So uh, this is uh, a... a it, a typology of the, the whole of government sectoral approach and streamlining po natin. Uh, let me just reiterate, Mr. Chair, and I would just um, uh, would request for our good senators' um, uh, assistance on this, that the ARTA's power right now on streamlining is recommendatory in nature, uh, sirs. Uh, meaning po, uh, we have several findings nakita po namin there are permits na kailangan tanggalin uh, whether in an agency level or interagency level ARTA uh, 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 through our better regulations office uh, do issue policy recommendations to different government agencies pero this remains as a recommendatory power of ARTA and it's still the agency who actually uh, would need to implement this recommendation to acceptable po sa kanila ito or hindi uh, the powers of ARTA on the enforcement side or the filing of cases is um, is included in a closed list in of Section 21 of RA 11032. Nandiyan po yung mga nilista na kung ano po yung mga kaso na maaring uh, i-file ng ARTA, which is number one, yung failure to process within processing time, 
uh, nagre-require ng additional documents na wala naman dun sa Citizens Charter na nakalista doon. Nag-require ng, ng uh, karagdagang fees na wala naman po doon sa, sa Citizens Charter. O, at uh, hindi ho nag-i-issue ng resibo. At uh, yung, uh, yung uh, kasama rin po yung uh, fixing. No? So those those uh, that list po yun po ang mga kinakasuhan po namin na pupunta ho sa aming complaints office but uh, most of the problem actually is and which would actually resolve red tape is on the streamlining yung 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 pag yung yung measure po ninyo ngayon Mr. Chair and the dear senators is really really um needed because it would make Uh, the streamlining mandatory already and even the particular streamlining. And I would just want to show uh, this slide po uh, that I showed earlier to the good senator, uh, uh, good chairman, uh, and also some of our particular programs and projects that we recommend na itulak po natin maybe through this special, uh, uh, through this bill po. No? May I request that this slide be shared? Mr. Chair, ang solusyon po sa red tape is streamlining and automation. Uh, I do subscribe to Senator Bongo's strong push po on e-governance. Totoo po yan. Yan po talaga ang, ang future po na atin pong uh, matagal ng pinupuntirya. Pero dahil po sa pandemya na ito, uh, e-governance actually uh, became a necessity po in order for us not only to to survive but to thrive. So on the special uh, anti-red tape powers, uh, next slide po. The, the problem that we see, next slide po. Next slide please. The landmark ease of doing business law of 2018 is indeed a revolutionary legislation. This has the potency actually to eliminate red tape from the Philippine bureaucracy. It is true. However, the global pandemic has created an exponential need for immediate relief from old and additional requirements exacted by government agencies who are trying to cope up with the existing health protocols. Moreover, there is a pressing need for businesses and the transacting public to get back on their feet and recharge the economy. Thus, a need for a special or additional powers with, with, that would supplement and strengthen the implementation of the EOD below uh, is really needed in this national emergency. Maganda po yung batas natin na, na create po na sa panukala po ng ating uh, Senate, uh, Senator, ng ating pong chairman. Uh, subalit, ang ang historically po ang experience ng mga government uh, ng mga uh, bansa sa ease of doing business is actually it really takes a germination time because of the creation ng tinatawag po na na national framework for regulatory management uh, I believe um, yung uh, Malaysia who is one of our neighbor it took them several years or five years ten years before they were able to really set up, you know, change the paradigm and set up the, the measures that we need on the earth. But with, with the ease of doing business law, po natin, we anticipate po natin, that things would be faster. Uh, we would be able to, you know, to catch up and uh, do it faster than uh, their experiences. But because of this, this pandemic, we do, uh, do support the mandatory streamlining ng mga processes. And uh, this is the example. This is our solution, uh, suggested solution po. Next slide po. Now, uh, Mr. Chair, there are already particular programs and there are already particular projects that is that are already on the pipeline. Um I, yun ho ang iba kong mga ipapakita. Ang isa po rito ay yung inilagay po natin sa ease of doing business law on the streamlining ng mga uh, uh, LGUs po. No? Yung business one-stop shops. Meron na ho tayong model po ng, ng 
is this one-stop shop? Because, uh, well, the solution actually is to hasten the implementation of already existing government programs on streamlining and automation. Streamlining must be mandatorily done so that we could actually start automating. Um, but what do I mean by this, Mr. Chair? There is a concept, there is a thinking kasi uh, that we say na e, automate mo lahat yan, masi streamline yan. Pero pagdating ho kasi sa streamlining and automation, baliktad po, we need to first, you know, peel off all of the unnecessary requirements and streamline the process before we automate. Kasi otherwise, papasok po yung red tape doon sa automation. So streamlining and automation really goes hand in hand. So on the streamlining program, the creation of business one-stop shops, which is actually composed of three simple steps, uh, uh, a a uh, concierge or yung single window na isasabit mo na lahat ng yung uh, requirements dyan doon sa lahat ng ahensya na, na, na naroon lahat ng opisina doon sa isang ahensya meron hong single window na payment and meron hong single releasing point that comprises all of the of the payments uh, all of the uh, permits that are needed you know, in the agency so mr chair this should this is not only applicable to lg user nung amin pong minamap out ng mga mga business one stop shops o ang mga processes po ng lahat ng mga nag-iissue ng permit sa buong Pilipinas sa mga agencies, this same principle could already be used. And dinabas na po namin sa guidelines ng ARTA po yan na, na inisyo po namin nung kamakailan for the creation of one-stop shops. And also, sir, uh, on the mandatoryness uh, of uh, the Nehemiah program, as I mentioned. Uh, next, sir. Uh, next slide po. On the e-governance naman po, Mr. Chair. There is already um, certain e-governance program na na anticipate ho namin na kung ito ho ay magawa po natin uh, by this year until next year, malaki hong kaalwanan po sa atin hong pamayanan. And this supports yung measure po ng tulak po ng, ni Senator uh, Bongo at ng ating hong Pangulo on e-governance. Uh, una po yung IBPLS or LGUs, yung Integrated Business Permits and Licensing System Software. This is already available. This software is already available and created by DICT for all LGUs. And basically what this software does is it combines the automation of the business permits, uh, yung mayor's permit, and also the building permits. So ito po ay kinakailangan na lamang pong gamitin ng mga uh, LGUs na wala pa hong automation. So what we're saying here is kung katulad po ng Valenzuela, which is very, very efficient, napakuhusay po ng ginawa po sa Valenzuela, hindi na ho nila kailangan nung, nung uh, IBPLS na ito. Pero for the other agent, for the third, fourth class municipalities, ito ho ang sinasabi ng ARTA, na gamitin nyo na ito, kung gusto nyo magkaroon ng sarili ninyo, eventually, you can do it, but for the meantime, because of the emergency, gamitin na po natin ito. Second, Mr. Chair, is the Central Business Portal. The Central Business Portal, uh, Mr. Chair, is again, as you know, sir, this is part of the ease of doing business law. Tuloy-tuloy po yung development natin dito, Mr. Chair, and by, by, by uh, November, the Phase 1 for starting a business, which means SEC, BIR, SSS, Field Health, and Pag-ibig, you could just go online in one site. You could just register it, sir. That is 33 days. You would be able. We would be able to do it in uh, not even one day, less than a day. Yen po, sir. So we are now in the beta testing phase. The next phase is on the operating a business. Ipapasok na po natin yung UERS, yung Unified Employers reporting system, Mr. Chair. Ito po yung pagre-report ng mga employers sa SSS Field Health Pag-ibig. Isahang submission na lang po doon sa portal din natin. And also on the secondary licenses, which is yung FDA, yung mga license to operate po sa Department of Agriculture and so on and so forth, about 20 of them, is the phase two. And the phase three, Mr. Chair, that we would want to happen also by next year sana, is yung mga mag-automate mag po na IBPLS, uh, doon sa number one, mag-integrate na rin po, Mr. Chair, doon sa central business portal natin by next year. And lastly, Mr. Chair, on the e-governance proposal natin is the National Single Window Program. 
I I heard Mr. Chair and I do second the the, the frustration po on many of our importers and exporters na ang daming dinadaanan pero this national single window program solves that meaning meron na po tayong platform diyan yung yung trade net uh, platform which is a also a site a website uh there we were able to map out uh, well the uh, department of finance was able to map out 75 government agencies already ang kinakailangan na lang po nila is mag pumasok po dito sa sa trade net na ito para makita po natin yung sinasabi natin na lahat nakikita natin na automated. So in 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 our opinion Mr. Chair, yes, we uh, Arta is really uh, filing cases also. In fact, Mr. Chair, last week we did file a case against a certain register of deeds and the president did echo uh, that LR uh, that the land registration should really shape up and we do agree. But but at the same time Mr. Chair, we do support the the, the bill. We should do support the bill because it mandate, mandates the automation and the streamlining of government agencies. Kung pwede ho natin, yun po ang maitulak po natin, Mr. Chair, and then we continue on the filing of cases of an investigation of ARTA with the help of the Ombudsman and the Civil Service. Ma, uh, I do believe, sir, that we would be able to finish this on time. Our suggestion, sir, uh, in, in, in fine, is let's give, uh, uh, for the creation of the business one-stop shop one month, uh mga agencies for the electronic business one stop shop sir let's give them three months for the onboarding of the central business portal let's give them six months and for the trade net maybe another six months po kasi nandiyan na po yan uh mr chair and the honorable senators and i i do believe sir you know the best days are really ahead of us thank you sir thank you very much uh uh, DG, DG, I just have a few questions. If it's with the permission of Senator Delon and my colleagues, no, I just have a few questions for the ease of doing business implementation. Um, and these are these are, um, I'd say, fundamental questions. Since the implementation of RA one one zero three two or the ease of doing business law, how many complaints has the authority receive? Maganda ipakita mo the number of complaints yes, and what you have done to act upon it. So Thank that you, we sir. have a we have a starting point, no, and we'll see what the uh, could be the possible problems and loopholes with what, yes, us, uh, what you've yes, encountered. Sir. Okay, sir. Uh, may I request uh, the slide be shown? Uh, I'll just mention it already, sir. Um, the total complaints that reached ARTA, uh, 3,964, 3, sir. Most of these complaints, copy furnished po ang ARTA. Ibig sabihin po, sir, it's actually directed to the agency, pero they copy furnished ARTA and um, tama po yung sinabi nyo, Mr. Chair, there is still a, a need for us to really beef up our information sa tao because some of them, say for example po, yung, mang, yung uh, mga complaints minsan na pupunta po sa amin from BIR, I think it was mentioned yesterday, Mr. Chair, uh, by the Chair himself during the meet, uh, hearing with the second one, uh, around from the 900 complaints that we receive, it's, it's just around 700 po ang hindi po within the... Uh, ARTA mandate, ibig sabihin po, wala dun sa list ng 21, uh, section 21 provisions. Uh, say, for example, Mr. Chair, uh, kinikwestion po nila yung decision po ng agency on, on whether dapat bang bawasan or, or liitan yung, yung uh, ini-exact na, na buwis. Uh, so, Mr. Chair, hindi po ito kasama, Mr. Chair, dun sa atin pong mga provision. So what ang, do ang, ang sinasabi mo, for example, halimbawa, no? And uh, Senator Julon, you can interject anytime you want. So ang sinasabi mo, halimbawa, uh, sa BIR, kung meron po silang assessment, tapos napakalaki yes. ng assessment uh, yes, that they feel is unfair, that's a complaint to you guys, but it's not in the scope of the law. It, yeah, it's not, in fact, sir, normally it's not directed to us, pero it is copy for Inisha, I mean, what we do, sir, is we still tag it as complaint kasi, and then what we do is we acknowledge it dun sa tao and we tell that person, oh, advise Arta if it was actually acted upon. Pero if we see, sir, even if we're just copy furnished and we see that it is actually within uh, the provisions, sir, ng Arta, then we send them um, uh, notices to explain. And uh, we call the agency within three days, nag-uusap po yung nakikita, and uh, mataas po ang resolution rate nila. In fact, Mr. Chair, 
since nung pumasok po itong ease of doing business law, ang bilis po ng compliance ng mga agencies pag tinatawag po sila ng ARTA. There are exceptional cases, Mr. Chair, that even we issued a, uh, uh, a, a notice of compliance to them, they would resist. Um, ito, Mr. Chair, yung wala na po kami magawa, so we bring to the uh, to the point of filing cases. Uh, Mr. Chair, just a very good example lang po na to. Uh, next slide po. What happened with the telco recently? Uh, from this time that ARTA started, um, August 11, sir, when we started to, to send the notices, uh, sorry, compliance orders to all LGUs, there is now about 1,300 permits na nailabas po, no? From, uh, as reported to us by our, by our uh, friends from Smart and Globe na regularly po nakakausap ng ARTA, whether yung permits po na yan na inilabas nila is sakop dun sa compliance order natin o hindi. Pero lumabas po ito even prior to the submission of the bayanihan, bayanihan to Mr. Chair. So meaning, uh, gumagana po, no? Pag tinatawag natin, we call their attention, uh, they they do respond, uh, but we what we also saw there, Mr. Chair, that a lot of the requirements actually, na, as as mentioned by the LGUs, eh, hindi rin naman hindi rin naman daw kompleto, no? So doon din huna namin nakikita, Mr. Chair, tinutulungan din natin sa kanila, oh, kompleto hinyo na po yan, no? Not only for Globe and, and Sun or Smart, but for all other applicants, oh, kompleto hinyo na yan, kasi hindi pa pasok sa Arta yan, kasi kulang yan, hindi mo pwedeng pilitin si ahensa na aksyonan. Yes, sir. Can we also look at the list, uh, uh, Director General, all those uh, cases that were filed in court and yes, what sir. were their, uh, what were the uh, reasons for filing? Yes, Just sir. quickly, uh, you know, because we have other agencies that we would like to ask and of course our colleagues would like to also interject. Okay. Sir, uh, first is the, uh, on the register of deeds. Uh, dito, sir, uh, this is the first one that we filed. Uh, this is on the RD of Davao City. Uh, ako mismo, Mr. Chair, uh, I was maybe 10 days, uh, less than 10 days in, in work. Uh, pumunta ko kami ni DDG Perez. Nabutan namin, Mr. Chair. Uh, we were there 10 five minutes before the lunch break. Uh, pinakitahan kami, Mr. Chair, ng uh, lunch break. So umalis lahat ng mga nakapila. So pinabalik ko namin, tinawag namin, balik dito, bawal yan. And uh, parang they, they seem to uh, thought na parang kailangan pwedeng mag-lunch break. So anyway, sir, uh, we went back uh, uh, and then filed a case against them. The second, sir, is uh, on the LTFRB. Uh, some officials of the LTFRB, sir, nag-conduct po tayo ng entrapment operation. Mr. Chair, uh, nakahuli po tayo ng mga fixers. Um and uh, doon ho mismo, Mr. Chair, sa, sa loob ho mismo nung premises, uh, yung amin pong asset, siya ho mismo nakikipag-text. So we we, no, we we work with the NBI and the PACC, so nakakuha po kami. So we filed a, a case po uh, sa kanila. Uh, and uh, tatlong divisions po, uh, tatlong directors po ang uh, nasako po niya. Next slide po. Also, Mr. Chair, on... Um, Next slide. Um, okay, ito rin po. No? Uh, a municipal mayor, Mr. Chair, also in Batanga City for violating the uh, provisions of RA 11C2, uh, paragraph C and paragraph E, a refusal to accept application and request even when it's complete and failure to render government services within the prescribed processing time, Mr. Chair. So we did file a case against them uh, with the Office of the Ombudsman. Next slide. Uh, the same thing, I believe, Mr. Chair, with another uh, uh, local chief executive, a governor that is uh, the same thing, Mr. Chair. Um, ARTA already they issued a, a um, uh, an order of automatic approval Sinasabi na uh, aprobado na yan sa batas, ang ginawa nila, nag-issue sila, Mr. Chair, ng, ng permit na iba dun sa in ng tao. Uh, and there are other uh, you know reports sa amin, confidential reports sa amin, that it's politically motivated, kaya hindi po lumabas ang, ang mga permits. Uh, so it was also filed with the Office of the Ombudsman. Uh, also, Mr. Chair, another register of deeds uh, from uh, Laguna also. 
uh, failure to render uh, government service within processing uh, prescribed time, sinasabi po nila na uh, bakasyon, uh, wala yung pipirma, uh, yung mga normal na sinasabi po nila. So, uh, after calling their attention, wala pa rin Mr. Chair, so we filed their uh, case. And uh, also, Mr. Chair, dito naman po, another entrapment operation that we conducted sa isa pong LGU sa Metro Manila uh, na nagkaroon ho ng fixing. So, this at this juncture, Mr. Chair, we filed a case po na to direct na po together with the uh, with the uh, apprehending team doon po sa regional trial courts kasi hindi po sila uh, sila yung mga rank and file, Mr. Chair. And recently, we also filed another case against, uh, last week, uh, another case against another register of deeds, Mr. Chair. Um, Although sinasabi nila dahil pand pandemic po sir uh, kulang daw sila ng tao uh, etc et pero nagpunta ho tayo doon again Mr. Chair uh, last break po sinara po nila yung opisina and as early as 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock in the morning may mga nakapila na po doon and they were also implementing a quota system Mr. Chair ibig sabihin kapag ka kompleto na kapag ka na umabot na ng 50 o 30 na aplikante hindi na sila tumatanggap kahit alas 10 pa lang ng umaga alas 11 ng umaga so hindi ho pwede yon Mr. Chair I already told the register of kids and, and if they're listening to me I already told them wag kayong magkukuta system kasi hangga't nandiyan yung mga tao sa loob tanggapin niyo yung kanilang applications so I hope uh, this would also serve as a lesson, Mr. Chair, to everyone. And meron hong iba pa ho kaming ngayon, Mr. Chair, na, na uh, we call it um, uh, yung mga uh, secret filers po namin, Chair, chair uh, from ARTA. With, with whatever we have, people that we have, sir, we try to deploy on the ground. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'd like to ask my colleagues if they want to ask questions. Senator Jolon? <clears throat> Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> uh, first of all, let me congratulate uh, Attorney Bill Hika for the programs that uh, he has initiated uh, as uh, Chief of the ARTA, of the uh, anti red Tape Authority. Um, we are here today, uh, Mr. Chairman, you call this hearing, in order to consider Senate Bill Number 18, 44. Uh, and uh, I am in receipt, and I was given a copy of the letter uh, signed by uh, the good uh, gentleman, uh, Mr. Belhika, uh, outlining his uh, proposed amendments. Uh, we regret, uh, Mr. President, that all of these guidelines need not be in the law. It can be done administratively. We did not incorporate this in the law because this can be done by executive order. Now, first, as a lawyer, uh, Mr. Belika is fully aware that the president under the Constitution has full control and supervision over the entire executive department. Do you agree? I agree. I agree, Mr. Uh, Senator. Sir. That he has full control. And therefore, he can uh, promulgate uh, any, uh, any rule as long as it is not contrary to the law. And here, uh, uh, all of these proposals that you have made can be uh, exercised by the president. Um, Remember that we, that our good chairman uh, uh, worked hard in order to uh, have the ARTA, uh, the Anti-Red uh, Tape Act, in uh, passed. But you must remember, uh, Mr. Wilhika, uh, Mr. that the law only provides for the maximum. When you say a permit must be issued in 10 days, that's only the maximum. Would yes, you agree? sir. I okay. agree, Mr. Senator. Now, if the president says it should only for five days, is there any violation of the law? None at all, sir. None at all. There should be, there is none at all. Because that connotes that the executive, when he says only five days, you finish that, 
accept a violation of the law because that is part of his power of control over the entire bureaucracy. Of course, the president, unless so authorized, cannot do away and cannot suspend permits. We did that in Bayanihan too. I was the one who inserted that provision in Bayanihan too. That removed, that suspended the uh, uh, licenses for the putting up of, of, of cell, uh, cell towers, at least for a period of three years. And therefore that, that uh, license required by law uh, is being dispensed with. And that has resulted, that has resulted in from from what I uh, I hear, the uh, the com the uh, cell towers being constructed at the pace that is needed so that we can hit 1,000 uh, cell users per tower, which is the world standard, and that is why in the proposed uh, uh, Senate Bill 1844, Section Two under Section Two we expressly authorize the president to suspend the requirements for national and local permits and to streamline and expedite the process of the issuance thereof. Because there are certain permits that, uh, that, that is the cause of delay and that's why the president is authorized to suspend that. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, later, Mr. Chair, if I could uh, present after the good senator, sir. Yes, yes. Fund after. No. Your proposed amendments, huh, which would, which where you would want us to uh, incorporate in the law the general guidelines, the special rules on validity of government permits, the whole of government approach, of nation, whole whole of nation approach, all of these are principles which you would want us to incorporate in the law and would remove the flexibility of the president. We are giving as much flexibility to the president consistent with his control of the executive branch. For, you, for us to follow your suggestion and incorporate all of these guidelines will actually, will actually bind the president to these guidelines and he would lose that flexibility. Would you, would you concede that? Uh, Mr. Chair, um, I wouldn't uh, fully agree with that statement, Mr. Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, if I may explain, Mr. Senator. Okay. No, no. Uh, you have been you have explained for thirty. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. When uh, I'm saying that these general guidelines that you placed here can be enacted through an executive order, right or wrong? Yeah, yes, sir. Actually, we already issued that, sir. Aren't okay. already issued that guideline? So, it is already yes, issued. Okay, so if you want greater strength, the president can issue an executive order which will incorporate in the executive order these guidelines. Would you agree? Yes, sir. We also suggested that already, sir. Yes. And yes, sir. the president can change the guidelines at any time uh, if uh, there is something needed to improve the guidelines. Would you agree with that? Yes, sir. Now, of course, of course. If we place that in the law, you would have to amend the law to revise the guidelines. Um, Mr. Sir, I think the guidelines are is pretty general, sir. It talks about principles. Uh, yeah. So, so, um, so principles, why does it have to be in the law? These are principles of governance, which which will be which is which is valid, which can be enforced through an executive order. On the other hand, incorporating it in the law will remove that flexibility on the part of the president. When he has all the flexibility today, he place all of these guidelines. Um, I can assure you that uh, this, uh, you cannot amend these guidelines or this uh, uh, whatever you have here um, and amend the law. And that is why I agree with you, Mr. Resource Person, that uh, these guidelines are necessary. My point is, yes, it is necessary, but you do not have to place it in the law because uh, uh, this will remove the flexibility of the president to improve and revise the guidelines the moment we put uh, put it in the law. Now, I have noticed that in your approach, uh, um, um, you 
have requested, or, or you basically, it's a legal approach. And uh, you count the number of cases you filed. The, you, you're even saying that you have assets, you have secret filers. Huh? In other words, I'm approaching the police. <laughs> because your orientation as a lawyer would tend to uh, favor uh, and have bias for uh, law and order. Huh? Maybe, Mr. Director, you may wish to consider uh, assisting the bureaucracy comply with their, uh, with their duty under the law. Have uh, uh, systems experts uh, look at uh, look at the process in a particular agency and suggest how to to improve and they can so that they can comply with the periods. I tell you, as a lawyer, I have been uh, in this bureaucracy for 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 thirty years or more, thirty five years, and I tell you, you find a case. This case will last for the next. Five years, and by the time that it is decided, you have lost the uh, the the purpose for which uh, you wanted you you filed these cases, meaning to put fear in the hearts of the of the bureauc bureaucracy. Because by the time I decided to wala na po tayo sa gobyerno, wala ka na sa gobyerno. My suggestion to you is that instead of filing cases as a first option. That should be the last, rather than the first. I would rather like to see you help the bureaucracy, the bureaucrats, by exposing them to management systems uh, uh, and not keep on just threatening them. I tell you, all about these bureaucrats, uh, these, these, uh, these uh, career people, they know that, uh, they, they, that they are protected by tenure, and so long as they can look at you in the eye and say, I am trying to do my job, lalabanan po kayo dito. On the other hand, and, and that is because, you know, you, uh, from the way I, I look at you, I look at your uh, your uh, uh, proposals, the, the, uh, you consider filing of cases as your first option. Let me repeat that. Your first option should be to help the bureaucracy, help the professional uh, uh, career people. I tell you, they, these career people would want to, to, to do their jobs uh, because they love to do their job uh, and not because they fear that cases will be filed against them. Mali po yung inyong approach of considering, uh, uh, of considering uh, uh, filing cases as the first option. I'm a little bit <laughs> aghast when you say, you have assets, you have secret filers. Pampulis po yan eh. Hindi po yan. Trabaho ng manager of an organization. Ngayon, law enforcement po yan. Not denigrating the police, but that is a law enforcement issue. Which, talking about that, if you examine our system and our laws, all of this that you're trying to do in terms of attempting to punish the bureaucrats for what you perceive to be a cause of red tape. If you look at the mandate of the Ombudsman and the Constitution, that is the work of the Ombudsman. And uh, that, that, uh, that's why the Ombudsman is there. Um, so you sh the, the Ombudsman is a, is a constitutional body and also is very jealous of its jurisdiction. So you will be questioned when you act on, on cases in a manner that you have been acting. By the way, I noticed that you are all lawyers. <laughs> uh, the three of you, Attorney Jeremiah B. Belhica, Director yes, General. Sir. Yes, sir. Attorney Desto V. Perez. Yes, sir. Deputy Director General. Attorney Eduardo V. Bringas. Uh, yes, the director general. You know, all of you are lawyers, and that is why the orientation is legal. Maybe you should take a good look and an approach of being a management and systems analyst 
so that you can help the 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 the, the, the career people and instead of putting fear in their hearts you help them perform their jobs that is my problem with your approach and uh, and uh, i am telling you that uh, 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 oh, by the way uh, i'm just curious uh, uh, mr wilhika uh, uh, what does reb stand for you always add this in your, in your <laughs> sure. what is this just sure, curious I, I'm, I'm, uh, it's a licensed real estate broker, and the ENP, sir, stands for Environmental Planner. So, sir, I am also a licensed uh, Environmental Planner, uh, so, Mr. Senator. It's a new thing, sir. Thank you, sir. It's a new thing. So, you're yeah. a licensed real estate broker. And uh, Environmental and, Planning, sir. I think that's, that's help in the, the planning, sir. I'm just curious about that. Thank and you, sir. And by the way, I noticed a very long name for the program. National effort for the harmonization of efficient measures of interrelated agencies. Medyo mahaba po ito, mouthful. Uh, that is why you have uh, an acronym called Nehemia. Is that Nehemia, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's uh, Nehemia. yes, sir. Nehemia. Nehemia. Yes, sir. Uh, it, it, it sounds, uh, uh, it rhymes with Jeremiah. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. It's actually, uh, if I may, Mr. Senator, uh, yeah. the the story and the life of the Prophet Nehemiah, sir, is an inspiration to the national effort to streamline. We believe, sir, that it could be done through a national effort in which uh, it takes its inspiration, sir. Yeah, sure. it should be done through a national effort. And that is where your thrust should be, to help the bureaucracy achieve the efficiency that we are looking for through a program that will look at the systems rather than have filing of cases as your first option. I have very serious problems about that because that is not our intention. Our intention and is to, is to address the bureaucracy uh, the, the, and uh, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, we never contemplated uh, on, 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 on that this is a criminal treated as a uh, criminal statute. And I'm telling you, Mr. Secretary, or Mr. Director, I have a personal uh, talk from experience because I was the Senate president and I was almost, uh, uh, I was almost at my knees trying to get the uh, National Commission on Indigenous People to issue a free prior informed consent huh, for a 11 billion dam in Iloilo. And we were going to benefit, uh, we were going to irrigate 33,000 hectares and the free informed prior consent was being delayed because of the objection of certain indigenous people, numbering about three dozens, we're not saying that they should we should not uh, uh, take care of their needs, but to delay an 11 billion government project because of a very reasonable, uh, uh, unreasonable uh, uh, objection of of two or three dozen indigenous families is something that uh, you will agree with me is uncalled for. Another thing, uh, Mr. Chairman, today, again, I tell you that I have experienced a very, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, ill effects of the bureaucracy. There is a government facility in my home city of India, which we are trying, to, which private sector has uh, uh, expressed interest to privatize. The papers were submitted a year ago. Huh? Submitted a year ago. It was a, uh, a proposal that was approved by the board only after one year. Huh? Only after one year. And uh, last, uh, it was only approved last August 28. And yet, Mr. Chairman, the next step of endorsing this to NEDA 
isang buwan na po. Just a simple transmission from that agency to NEDA, hindi pa po natatransmit. This is the kind of bureaucracy that we should look at. And uh, really, it, it, I am already a senator. I'm a senior senator. And yet, and yet, I receive this kind of a treatment. I keep on pushing them because I know that this is for the good of, 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 this, of, of my home city. This is consistent with government policies. And yet, isang taon po sa ahensya, bago po maaprobahan, naaprobahan na isang buwan pa, ang isang buwan na, hindi pa natatransmit sa NEDA. So, <laughs> transmit lang yun ha. These are the kinds of uh, systems that we should look at and improve. Rather than threaten the cabinet secretary or health with the criminal prosecution. Sa akin po, uh, hindi po tama yan. And, uh, uh, and uh, that is why I was, the, well, I was part of the author, as uh, Senator Subiri said. Ito pong uh, uh, Senate Bill 1844 is a collective effort, of, a bipartisan effort of both the administration and the opposition to make the law effective. And that is why we are giving all the powers to the president. In order, because you will be placing a lot of removing, as I repeat, a lot of flexibility on the part of the president, and even uh, uh, asking for powers to subpoena, power to contempt, cite for contempt. E para po kayo kusgado, eh. That is not how it should be. When you ask for subpoena powers, contempt powers, you act like a quasi-judicial body. I do not think that when we approved the ARTA, we had that in mind because that function is performed already by constitutional bodies like the Ombudsman. So it is on that note, uh, Mr. President, that uh, we, uh, we uh, feel that uh, the original draft authored by uh, your good self uh, and the Senate President should be maintained because this is what will give flexibility to the president. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator Dillon. Before you answer, Director General, yeah. Okay. Although although um, uh, we have opposing views on the matter, but I will respect your decision, <laughs> Senator Dillon. But, uh, you know, I, I have to put in um, into proper perspective. I recall I was not a senator at the time, but when there were investigations in place due to the misuse of PDAF, uh, because of the misuse of PDAF uh, and the subsequent action done by former President Pinoy in the suspension of so many individuals, as well as apprehension, no? even of high-ranking officials, maraming natakot na misuse yung kanilang PDAF. One thing I have to say, no, uh, that administration, when it came to uh, the misuse of public funds, at least I must put on record, because of the fear that the ombudsman had given the, the politicians and the misuse of uh, their funds. Maraming natakot uh, magnakaw at that time. Um, so, um, Mr. Chairman. Yes, yes, Mr. Chairman, Mr. President. Uh, Senator Dillon. I, I, I don't think that we can compare PDAF with the red tape that we see and try to resolve. Malayo po yan, magkaiba po yan. Yung pong PDAF, uh, uh, there was uh, infidelity in the custody of public funds. Uh, ito po naman, hindi naman, you know, uh, you do not, my, my point is, to make the bureaucracy more effective, it is not a law and order problem. It is not a matter of granting, making the art a quasi-judicial body with power to issue subpoena, cite for contempt, file cases, employ uh, uh, underground or, or, or agents, uh, assets, hindi po yan sa akin. Eh. Sa akin, ang ARTA ay dapat tumulong sa bureaucracia. But I'm not saying that they should have no power uh, to file cases, but it should be as a last resort rather than as a first uh, uh, cause or uh, first uh, resort. Yes, noted, noted uh, to our dear minority floor leader. That's why we're going to keep this as simple as possible, the bill. Uh, let us leave it to the president. I actually want to ask the office of the president, and we have with us, unfortunately, the executive secretary. Before I recognize anyone else, I'd like to recognize 
our Senate President Pro Temp, Senator Ralph Recto, who is also a principal sponsor and author of the measure. Uh, I noticed that we have Office of the President, Director uh, Julio Saban uh, with us. But before I recognize him, uh, Ma'am Cynthia, would you like to make a comment? Uh, I would like to support the manifestation of Senator Drillon that ARTA should help in the system improvement of the bureaucracy and uh, should help also to automate because automation will make it easier to process these permits. And I would like to warn him that no, coming from the business sector, I don't think no uh, logical minded businessman will file case against his regulatory agency. I mean, that's the reality that you have to face. Walang magdidimanda na isang businessman against his regulatory agency kasi lalo siyang mapapahamak doon. Kaya I don't think, kaya sinasabi mo, mga, ano ba yun, ang, ang mga nagpa-file ng case sa'yo, hindi kilala yung gano'n, pwede ba yun? Na magpa-file ka ng case, hindi ka magpapakilala? No, no, I don't think so. so you will have a problem with that. No logical businessman will file cases against regulatory agencies. So you will be better off uh, listening to Senator Drillon that you help in the system improvement and uh, automation of the bureaucracy. That would be, uh, you will accomplish there something. But filing cases, I don't think. Kasi ako, uh, pamilya ko, business eh. Hindi kami magfa-file ng case to any regulatory agency. Makikiusap kami, pero hindi kami magfa-file ng case. Yun lang. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, in fairness to Director General Melika, uh, the presentations he made during the budget hearing as well as the presentation he made today shows that he's also moving towards that direction. Several meetings with the different agencies, streamlining their uh, bureaucracies and uh, uh, working with the different government uh, uh, cabinet secretaries. So I think he's doing it hand in hand. Uh, but I just want to find out where the sheer frustration of the president lies in. There must be something wrong. Somebody must have told him something uh, for him to react this way. And that is why I would have wished that the uh, sec executive secretary would be here with us because, of course, he's the closest to the president. But the OP is here, you know, the office of the president is here. Maybe he can share to us uh, where his frustrations come from. Is it because the, the 888, all the complaints go to the office of the president? And, uh, of course, he gets, uh, does he receive all these complaints himself? And uh, because of all these complaints, that's where he gets his exasperation or or, or uh, his uh, frustrations. Let me ask uh, the office of the president, Director Julio Saban, uh, on this issue. And I have other questions about, uh, about also the issue of... Uh, uh, suspension, because um, if the president, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not a lawyer, but I've been in the bureaucracy for 18 years now and defended several budgets and supported several measures. I know for the fact, for a fact that the president has the power to suspend any officials. So if there are complaints made to the office of the president, why is it not acted upon? Uh, that's why I'd like to ask the office of the president. Director, could you give us, uh, you're recognized, could you give us a a brief um, uh, answer to my uh, query, please. You are on mute, sir. Yes, please unmute yourself. <clears throat> okay. Good morning, yes. Mr. Chair and uh, dear senators. Uh, as to your query about uh, the sentiments of the president, I'm sorry I am not privy to uh, what the uh, president feels about complaints addressed to him. But, uh, Mr. Chair, as to the bill, uh, in general, we support the intention of the bill. And this will be subject to uh, review and the recommendation of uh, the different uh, agencies in the line in the executive department. Sure. I had a question, sir, about the suspension of airing officials because I noticed the president seems helpless. I mean, he had a meeting with us, uh, with the senators and congressmen. And then uh, last night, obviously, he had also come out uh, very, very passionate and very frustrated about the situation. 
on the fact that he seems helpless. He said he is helpless on the issue of corruption. I just want to know, for the record, that the office of the president has the power under the Constitution, correct, Mr. Uh, to our minority floor leader, he's a legal luminary. Yes, the president has the full powers. He has control and supervision over the entire executive department, including the LGUs, uh, the supervision over the LGUs. But yes, uh, he has uh, full control and supervision. And in so far as the discip discipline of the uh, of the uh, bureau of the bureaucracy, uh, the, uh, the discipline of career of, of career bureaucracy, in fact, is delegated to the cabinet secretaries. But the power is from the president, so he has full authority on that. Uh, um, in so far as uh, from the cabinet down to the last janitor. May kapangyarihan po ang Pangulo na magsuspindi. The, 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 in our system, the President is very powerful in so far as control of the bureaucracy is concerned. Yes. May I add uh, to our Minority Floor Leader, uh, may I add that uh, it's consistent with Article 7, Sections 1 to 17 of the Constitution, revised and the revised Administrative Code and other existing laws and jurisprudence, that the President has the authority to yes. suspend or remove. Yes. Uh, so that is the power that they have. So I'm I'm wondering, you no, know, because of course the buck is thrown back to the uh to the legislative body to do something about it. Yeah. So my question is if we pass this very simple measure, it's a two-page measure, which gives the president the authority to do so, will he uh will he use that power? to be able to clean up the ranks of the executive. It falls back down to the president. Yes. So, nasa kamay niya na. The ombudsman kasi, nandyan po si Justice, uh, uh, Justice Edilberto Sandoval, and uh, the ombudsman will act on cases that were filed to them. Diba? Or sometimes they can also act moto proprio. But they do not know all the cases from Apari to Tawi-Tawi, all the complaints filed no, to the ARTA. But the complaints filed to the office of the president can be acted upon. Uh, immediately by the office of the president. Am I correct, uh, Director? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, there are cases that uh, fall directly under the uh, jurisdiction of the president. Uh, as such, we have a, a division in our legal office, uh, which we call the discipline office, which acts on uh, complaints <laughs> against uh, public officials under the jurisdiction of the office of the president, uh, Your Honor. So have there been cases uh, that have been acted upon wherein there were immediate suspension or uh, a removal of offices of particular, on this particular case of ease of doing business or issues of corruption? Yes, sir, Mr. Chair, uh, several. Uh, there are hundreds of cases pending in our discipline office. And uh, slowly these are, uh, are acted upon by uh, a team of lawyers in our discipline office. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, please. Just think about it. Just think about it. The president has the power to suspend and dismiss elective local officials for transgression of the law. Huh? He is given power. If he has the power over uh, over elective officials, how much more with the uh, appointed or appointed officials? So that is why, Mr. President, I am of the view that the president is sufficiently clothed with the power needed in order to do what we want, what is contemplated uh, by this, by the, the by the present law. And this uh, uh, Senate Bill 1844 is a recognition of that executive power except that he has, we have given him the power to suspend certain uh, licenses which uh, may be enacted, which may be uh, pursuant to certain laws, just to suspend temporarily during the period of uh, emergency. Uh, but otherwise, uh, the presence has all the powers, discipline, uh, run the bureaucracy, uh, manage the bureaucracy. Hindi po kailangan ang bagong batas. 
Ang kapangyarihan po ay nasa Pangulo at you cited correctly both under the Constitution and the Administrative Code. The President has the power to discipline. Yes, that's the reason why, uh, gentlemen, ladies, no, I had the, this is actually my amendment in the original bill, wala po tong Section 3. This was an amendment that I placed in just to remind the Executive uh, Department, of course, the Office of the President, that the President has this power. Kaya hindi ko maintindihan eh, when he comes out with sheer frustration on a particular agency, he has the power to suspend everybody there. Uh, he has the power to remove the Secretary. He has the power to act on uh, on on these uh, particular cases uh, uh, within the agency itself. Um, yes. May I ask the comment yes. of the uh, ombudsman? Am I correct, uh, uh, Justice uh, Sandoval? Am I correct, sir, by saying yes. that the president has that power, sir? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I do not know unless he's being um, uh, unless uh, Senator Julon, I'd like to ask, what are the powers of the Civil Service Commission on that aspect? Uh, there are the, up to a certain level, uh, the uh, Civil Service Commission, the career, uh, career, uh, how they call that? The uh, career service. Career service. So, uh, uh, would the Civil Service would have the plenary authority? Yeah, may we ask the civil service? Is the civil service uh, here, uh, Comtech Jane? May we ask the civil service to comment, please, uh, on this particular issue? Uh, direct, Executive Director, ma'am, are you online? Uh, could you join us, please, in the discussion? Senator Rector, you can uh, interject anytime, uh, our President Pro Tem. Yes, uh, CSC Executive Director Arthur Florentine. Uh, good morning, sir, or good noon. Uh, this is a working lunch. Uh, you can make, uh, you can have lunch while we're meeting. No problem. Um, could you comment, sir? Because uh, as you notice, uh, this past few days, the president has shown a sheer frustration and exasperation over the issues on corruption, and that is why we're pa we're trying to pass a simple uh, emergency, sort of like emergency powers granted to the president during the times of calamities and in the times of emergencies for the streamlining of these cases of this e of this permits and licenses. But at the same time, during his uh, pronouncements, he shows uh, his exasperation on corrupt government officials, no? whether whichever department they may be in. But in the executive department, uh, your honors, as discussed earlier by the office of the president and by minor, the minority floor leader, uh, one of our legal luminaries in the Senate, is that it is in the within the powers of the president to suspend and remove uh, these airing officials, of course, with the due, with due process, no, there must be an investigation. What are the uh, what are the conditions? Will there be a hindrance? Will the SE uh, the CSC? Are there guidelines of the CSC on this particular issuance of suspensions? Are the is the president uh, allowed to do so? First question, uh, Your Honor, Executive Director. Yeah, I think uh, Director Alma uh, will be able to respond to that uh, better. Okay, yes, sir. Uh, Your Honor, uh, the president uh, has the power to discipline uh, officials under the career executive service or what we call as the third level. These are the officials that are appointed by him and they belong to the career service. He also has the power to remove those in the non-career service who are appointed by him like cabinet secretaries. But uh, when it comes to career officials, there is a condition that uh, is imposed by, the, by uh, the administrative code that they can only be removed after uh, 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 affording them due process and for a just cause. And I think that is one of the conditions that would have to be followed first. But otherwise, if the official is non-career, that person can be removed if uh, the president loses trust on that, uh, on that official. As for the other uh, officials and employees of the government who are not appointed by the president, but were ap appointed by uh, their respective appointing authorities like uh, cabinet secretaries, department heads, they can remove by the appointing authority because appointing authority is the same as the disciplining authority. Of course, following again the rules, the proper rules of procedure. Mama Alma, question. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, your you honor. 
yung uh, uh, the issue for example on career officials for example uh, uh, members of the bureau of customs of BIR were perennially there are complaints no of of these issues um di ba pag violation of the law first of all the president can suspend them not necessarily remove them right uh, a pending investigation the president can suspend them does he have the power to suspending suspend them pending investigation yes he, uh, yes, sir. Honor, right, right. If these right. officials are presidential appointees, he can preventively suspend them. No, I'm talking about career. Because the rank and file of certain uh, agencies are sometimes are already career officials, are career um, uh, employees. Diba? As you said, kasi, mm -hmm. if it is appointed by the president, they're what you call coterminus. Para kami sa Senado yan, all our staff are coterminus. Diba? So we can uh -huh. remove them at any point in time. We understand that, uh, uh, Ma'am Alma. But what about the career uh, rank and file who participate in red tape in in, uh, in uh, violations of the EODB law? The president can also suspend them pending investigation if there is a complaint, tiba, Ma'am Alma? Yes, suspend, Your Honor. Ha? In the event, yeah. suspend, ha? Preventively suspend because the president also appoints career officials, not just non-career. Okay. He can appoint Clear. directors of uh, bureaus and uh, his okay. power is given to him under uh, PD-1, I think. So that's clear. So violation, for example, of existing laws is, uh, is, a, uh, is also a cause for investigation. Therefore, I will go through due process. For example, uh, violations of the provisions of the Ease of Doing Business Act or uh, whatever regulation done by the, uh, for example, the secretary decides that within five days, all these permits and certificates should be released. The people under him do not act upon it. Um, therefore, they can be preventively suspended uh, because of the non, uh, their, uh, I guess, the non-implementation of the department order. Is that correct, Ma'am Alma? Uh, yes, Your Honor. But, but then for preventive suspension, there are, all, there are also certain conditions, like, for example, uh, the offense must involve uh, grave misconduct, uh, the serious offenses. And then uh, there has to be, prior to that, there has to be a finding of prima facie case first, as far as administrative cases are concerned. So uh, it is a requirement that dapat po, prior to preventive suspension, there will be a formal charge. Formal administrative case. <laughs> yeah, a formal charge, Your Honor. A charge that could be administrative, not criminal in nature. Oh, po. Administrative Sir, case. If you study, ma'am, I'm sure you know, I'm sure you're very familiar with the Ease of Doing Business Act, no? Uh, a mere non-acceptance of the documents in the place of transaction is already a violation. So uh, a complaint such as that can already act on, uh, can already trigger an investigation di ba, ma or a filing of an administrative case to that person. Therefore, be getting they can be suspended, uh, preventively suspended. Tama po yan, Ma'am Alma. Yes, Your Honor, it could trigger an investigation because it violates the, that provision of the EODB. But then, as for the question of whether it, that person can be preventively suspended, I think we have to review because uh, I could not recall exactly the penalty. Because yeah. preventive suspension applies yeah. only when the formal charge involves a grave of. So uh, yeah. I think we the have to revisit why... the penalty. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because we're passing an emergency powers to the president to shorten, shorten uh, streamline further, even uh, removing additional requirements or existing requirements to certain permits, licenses, and certificates. Now, problema, gawin nga niya yan, sabihin niya, oh, instead of 20 days sa EODB under this emergency powers act, I will, get, I will make it 10 days for all these licenses and permits. Paano po kung hindi nag-comply yung department and their personnel. Back to zero na naman tayo. Paano po pag hindi nag-comply? And that's why I put the powers to suspend and remove. Kasi magiging inutil po yung presidente pag hindi naging technical po tayo at hindi po gumalaw yung uh, tao sa baba. That's a hypothetical question that I would like to raise. No? What if those people do not comply? What if the barangay chairman does not comply? What if the uh, city council does not comply. What if the uh, mayor does not comply or even the executive uh, uh, department, the directors will not comply? That is my fundamental question. Yes, a minority leader, you're recognized, Senator Gillon. 
if the bureaucracy does not comply, say a director does not comply. Suspend the director so that the assistant director takes over oh, uh, while he is on suspension, uh, assuming that we go through a due process. Uh, if, we, if the director is suspended because of his uh, inability, whether deliberate or negligent or through negligence, to issue a permit, suspend him, let the next in rank uh, be elevated. The mayor, he does not follow, suspend him. The vice mayor takes over and acts on. That's how the, the system works, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, I just wanted it on record, uh, Your Honors. I just wanted that on record because. I don't want, again, the president uh, hopefully not to come out and say, oh, they may gave me these powers, but uh, uh, what if they do not comply? What, we, what shall I do? Yes. At least on record, we can say that he has the powers to suspend, even yes. remove these adding officials, of course, with due process, no? Uh, with due process. Uh, do my colleagues want to ask uh, other questions? Uh, we'd like to also, uh, yes, Senator Gacalian, you're recognized, Paul. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to ask uh, the ARTA Director General again. I saw in the presentation that they have identified several industries that they want to uh, streamline. And um, um, it, who will be prescribing the streamlining process? Yeah. Is it the agency itself or is it uh, ARTA? Yeah. Th thank you, Ms. Mr. Chair, with your due permission, Mr. Chair. Um, th thank you, Senator Gatchalian, sir. Um, oh, the, the streamlining uh, is actually, at first, Mr. Chair, we call on the agencies. Uh, uh, sometimes if we, got, if we get uh, a complaint for an agency for being too long, and rightly so, uh, said by Senator Drillon, ang sagot ko talaga sa red tape is yung streamline at ayusin proseso. So we call, we call them, Mr. S Senator. And then uh, after some hearings, uh, also with the stakeholders who are affected, sometimes hinihipan ko namin ito, Mr. Senator, kasi nabanggit ko kanina ni Senator Villar na para protektahan yung mga negosyante, yung mga stakeholders uh, to be, for them to freely you know, voice out their concerns on the streamline uh, on the on the process. Then we we come out, Mr. Uh, Senator, of, with a recommendation uh, on the streamlining, sir. Uh, then uh, ito po yung binabanggit ko po kanina. That recommendation, sir, is actually uh, given to the agency uh, because um, uh, sila parin po kasi ang merong uh, jurisdiction over the over the transaction or over the industry that they are uh, you know legally bound to oversee so we give them the recommendation um and uh, marami ho kami na padala ho ng mga recommendations on streamlining processes pero as for arta mr senator um on streamlining we remain to be recommendatory in nature yun po ang isa sa mga request po namin sir na baka pwede po nating gawing uh, magkaroon ng process for a mandatory uh, streamlining and that's why we re we really support uh, the, the the bill. So it's ARTA who could actually give the recommendation to them uh, with our pool of experts also. Uh, UP is there, uh, World Bank is also helping and uh, DAP, Development Academy of the Philippines. Uh, on the particular sectors, Mr. Senator, I think na kung nakita niyo po yung isa sa my presentations on the program ni Himaya, there has been already a study conducted by the Development Academy of the Philippines. They call it the uh, Modernizing Regulatory um, Program, Modernizing Government Regulatory uh, Regulations Program. So uh, we've been working very closely with the AP at gusto ho namin na uh, ito po yung mga i-implement po natin as a streamlining of, of the sectors. So this is again a recommendation to the uh, different uh, agencies within these sectors, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I may be allowed just to interject just on that point of the provision of San Julian. Uh, uh, Go ahead, please, sir. Go ahead, please, sir. You know, uh, Mr. Director, if you read the GOCC Governance Act, 
we a very uh, powerful uh, body, which is actually go through the authority to privatize, reorganize, abolish. There is an existing agency that has that power. To have another agency having that kind of power will just result in conflicts of jurisdiction. Let me repeat, the GOCC Governance Act empowers the Governance Commission for GOCC to privatize, to abolish, to reorganize, to do anything, uh, and to privatize. In fact, uh, uh, we tried uh, uh, in, the, in the previous administration, uh, President Aquino, upon the recommendation of the Secretary of Finance, tried to merge DBP and uh, Land Bank with Land Bank as the surviving agency. That's a huge bureaucracy, but it could be done under present laws with an executive order. So again, uh, uh, just to put on record that uh, the, the, there is no gap in the law on that point because there is uh, sufficient authority on the part of the Governance Commission for GOCCs. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, before uh, the uh, department reacts, we'd just like to uh, recognize our distinguished colleague from the, the province of Cavite, Senator Ramon Bongdevina, Jr. Good morning, sir. So, would you want to uh, answer? Ah, yes, uh, Senator Gachalian, you still have the floor. Please. Just to, just to uh, finish, uh, I, I had some experience, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, the same experience with the good minority floor on NCIP because I talked to the power developers on a regular basis. And I'm sure the chairman also knows about this very well. Gabisado, the chairman, Mitchell. But there is also one one very, uh, for me, very peculiar permit that uh, government agencies is asking. And this is what they call certificate of non-coverage. Um, you have to get a certificate that will tell you, that will tell the government that you're not covered by permits. So, in other words, a certificate that you are not uh, that you don't need to comply. Uh, with certain permits. And this ha this is all over the bureaucracy, uh, DG. My, my point of the matter there is, when I was asking them, bakit pakalangan itong certificate of non-coverage? In effect, it's telling the government that you're not um, required to submit uh, prerequisites. And if but I may, if I may, my dear colleague, that alone, that permit of non-coverage can take Several months to even a year. Nangyari na sa akin yan. We had a solar power project in Mindanao. It was under industrial uh, title. Then. Hindi po siya, hindi po siya uh, uh, ancestral domain. But yet the agency or the, the private sector had to go and get a uh, what's that? certificate of non-coverage before the DOE could actually provide, proceed with the, with the project. Yes. If, if, if you may allow Senator Dulon to also comment. Senator Dulon. Yes. Uh, just in response to the, uh, to, the, uh, con to the very valid concern of Senator Wynn, that is why the uh, we have provided under Section 2 is the uh, to, uh, to uh, suspend the Certificate of non-coverage. Certificate of non-coverage. That's, that's similar to a requirement, an occupancy permit for cell towers. Can you imagine? The cell towers are, are required to get a, a occupancy permit. What kind of, 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 of process that has permeated in our bureaucracy unnoticed, huh? and it therefore really uh, has uh, has slowed down um, uh, our process. And that is why Section 2 of the proposed structure would give the authority to the president. In Bayanese 2, we just did it directly. We suspended everything, of course, because that's very specific. Uh, we knew what the problem was. But Section 2 is a broad authority to allow the president to address any permit which is uh, really necessary 
as like the permit that you just have seen. Yeah. Thank you, good minority floor. And uh, the chairman is correct, no? That certificate of non-coverage is, um, is present in many of the offices. It's basically saying you have to get a certificate that I don't need a certificate. No, so and tama si Senator Mix, it takes almost months to even years just to get that uh, certificate of non-coverage. You know, and, uh, you is, um, a lot of the... Yes. To add to that, they have to set a team. Just to add to that, they will have to set a time and date to inspect the property. Then they'll send a team, obviously at your expense, uh, to take care of the visitation. And that takes up to six months. And, um, you know, another uh, department that has that, uh, Your Honor, is the Department of Agrarian Reform. Yes, get the Agrarian Reform permit. Yes, please continue, Senator Katrian. Please continue. Yes. Chair, my, my, my point of the matter, Mr. Chair, is if you ask the departments, bakit my certificate of non-coverage? And their answer will be, yan na ho yung proseso eh. Yan na ho yung uh, na, nasanay na ho kami doon. There's no valid answer to that. And it seems to me that they're just so used to what they are doing that they are they refuse to change their ways. That's why I ask, what if ARTA comes up with a procedure and... How will we compel that agency to adopt that streamlined procedure? Yeah. You may answer, Luigi. Uh, 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 Senator Dulon, Muna, Senator Dulon, and then Senator Dulon. The president has disciplinary powers. She has supervision and control over the entire bureaucracy. And that authority is recognized as, uh, as uh, the uh, uh, Section 3 of the proposed measure. Uh, reiterates the power of the president under the constitution and the revised administrative code so that it's a question of the, the president exercising that authority through the secretary of the executive secretary as the alter ego of the president. So sufficient authority is clothed uh, with the, uh, by law to the president. Yes, please uh, reply. You can reply, uh, DG. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you for the question, uh, Senator uh, Winget Chalyan. Sir, this is w one of the things that we really do um, uh, recommend na tanggalin po. Kasi, number one, sir, um, the ease of doing business law, the ease of doing business law already uh, gave uh, a uh, period of processing times, three days, seven days, 20 days. Pero for this particular th um, uh, service, it should be three days lang po if it is actually retained right now. And actually, ARTA already gave our um, findings po on the Citizens Charter. Kasi dun sa kala po Citizens Charter, it did not state kung gaano katagal ang uh, Certificate of Non-Coverage. Um, number two, sir, uh, we also um, do uh, go back to the... Uh, Men, what the what Sec Senator uh, Dirilon did mention on the GCG, I'm not sure if sir if that would also include sir non non GCG or non GOCCs uh, for the reorganization. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Senator, but uh, if it would because there are other agencies, sir, that are not uh, GOCCs uh, that uh, is still under the the ARTA coverage. But yes. we would be willing, yes. sir, to to look the, at it, sir. Yes. yes. Uh, Mr. Director, it is the GOCC Governance Act is for government corporations. But for non-government corporations, the overall authority of the president of supervision and control still applies. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Um, so, but, but as for ARTA, sir, uh, what we do issue in case of uh, non-compliance to the findings and recommendation is the notice of warning. That is what is given to the RE 1102, sir. And um, uh, meron ho kami around mga 12 or 13 uh, recommendations that we have already issued to the different government agencies. And uh, again, we've, we've worked with them and walked with them kasi, Mr. Senator, naniniwala po kami that being on the ground, alam po nila yung actual na pulso at nangyayari po dun sa ground. So what ARTA does is we really look at it. Kaya ba talaga? Kulang ba talaga ang tao? Or simply meron talagang resistance kasi may nakikinabang dun sa dati pong processing uh, sistema? So sir... Yes, sir. Saying, you should look at the systems first rather than yeah. 
have cases as your first option. Look at the system, how you can help the bureaucracy. That's all that we're saying. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We duly noted uh, we're, we're also doing uh, our best to do both, sir. Uh, because I believe uh, that is part of uh, what was given as a mandate to the authority, enforcement, and empowerment. It is actually a, a bit of a strain. And I would say, Mr. Senator, sir, uh, respectfully, that when I was in Paris last year, attended the OECD conference, uh, the other countries were actually amazed uh, with this new law because it combined uh, both uh, functions of uh, enforcement and also streamlining uh, for one agency. So. Uh, I, I think, Mr. Chair, uh, I told them this is, you know, what the Philippines needs right now because, in a way, kapag takot pong mga ahensya, alam ho nila na pwede ho silang makasuhan pag hindi sumunod, it really gets their attention and gets you to the door. Pero I would say, again, sir, I do second your opinion uh, that uh, streamlining really and, and you know, uh, uh, re-engineering is really the, the way to end the red nature. Maybe we can also ask, uh, with the indulgence of my colleagues, let's ask the business sector to react on this. And if there are also cabinet uh, members here or agencies that would like to comment and react, may you also state, there's so many that we invited almost across the board, uh, uh, my dear colleagues. So uh, if I gave them two minutes each, baka uh, abutan tayo ng four o'clock ng hapon. So what we could do is we can ask the, the agencies that would like to state for the record some comments. Yes, um, Yusek uh, Echeverri, uh, you're recognized. We'd also like to ask the private sector to comment after uh, the MLG. Yes, yes, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Yes, please it go interposes ahead. no objection as to the, the bill. But for the record, Mr. Chair, the DILG issued five memorandum circulars, four JMC and one MC. The first JMC is the Joint Memorandum Circular on Telcos. Another is the Joint Memorandum Circular on Business Permits, License, and Standard for two days, meaning they should be issued in four, two days only. Another is the Joint Memorandum Circular between DPWH, the ICT, and the ILG for building structure permits that they should uh, get it within five days. Another, Mr. Chair, is the integration for barangay clearance wherein taxpayers doesn't need to go to the barangay anymore, but to the city instead of getting business permit. And last is the rationalization of fees and charges between Department of Finance and the ILG for streamlining, Mr. Chair. RJ, can you hear me? Uh, yes, you, we lost you. Um, sec, you sec. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you for your interventions and the uh, uh, coming out with these uh, particular directives from the department. That will uh, extremely help move forward. Um, we'd like to also now also recognize the private sector. I saw earlier uh, Mr. John Forbes of the Chambers of Commerce. Um, uh, Jane, our ComSec, may, we rec may you recognize uh, or call the uh, private sector so that they can give their Mr. Uncle, um, I call this Uncle John, but um, for the meeting today, we will call uh, Mr. Forbes. Uh, All right. Mr. Forbes, good to have you with us. Could, would you like to comment, sir, on the, the granting of additional powers to the president to cut the red tape? Well, thank you, Majority Leader, uh, for the honor of inviting uh, the foreign, uh, foreign chambers to uh, the hearing today. Of course, we've been a big supporter of the anti-red tape law since 2007 and what you did in the last Congress for the EODB uh, and in the past, the National Competitive Council and uh, now the ARTA as it grows and uh, uh, begins to become uh, more effective. Uh, I guess there are three things in life that we all face. We always face death and taxes and now a certificate of non-compliance. So that's what I learned today. Uh, we, uh, we support uh, the proposed measure. Uh, we think uh, that uh, anything that uh, improves the ease of doing business ranking, uh, as well as the, uh, the WEF, uh, uh, what was called the uh, concerns of business, although frankly, the EODB of the World Bank is sus suspended for some methodology issues, 
and the World Bank no longer does, uh, not since 2017, uh, the particular uh, <clears throat> measure that shows 16 factors where the Philippines uh, <clears throat> ranks the concerns over the inefficient government bureaucracy as number one, which is not the case of any of the other ASEAN countries. Uh, we have uh, submitted some uh, some charts uh, <clears throat> to at a statement to the uh, to the committee. Uh, I think our concern is uh, with declining uh, foreign investment. Uh, that's happening, uh, of course, because of the uh, global uh, recession or possibly even a depression. Uh, UNCTAD has uh, estimated a reduction of uh, 35 to uh, 40 percent in FDI in emerging Asia for uh, uh, for this year and uh, next year isn't going to be uh, uh, much better. So uh, as the Philippines competes for a shrinking quantity of FDI globally, uh, it's going to have to improve. So we see this legislation as taking advantage uh, to try to uh, support uh, uh, <coughs> the, the uh, uh, anti-red tape uh, agency uh, and the bureaucracy as a whole in, 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 in trying to remove unnecessary uh, <clears throat> regulations, rules, paperwork, uh, go digital, uh, get to the point. If the airlines can do it, why can't uh, the bureaucracy do it as well? Um, we um, had suggested in our position paper possibly three amendments that you may wish to consider. Um, one, of course, would perhaps ask agencies within 30 days to submit their recommendations. Uh, it's, it's sort of a monumental task, I think, for the office of the president to look at all the regulations and decide which is more important. So why not ask the agencies themselves uh, under the sort of recommendation of the guidance of uh, uh, to submit within 30 days? Uh, secondly, we're a little bit concerned about the sunset because hopefully the state of emergency uh, will end uh, sooner than later. Uh, but, but what is the uh, accomplishment of having suspended or uh, <clears throat> uh, done something during the state of emergency that doesn't continue into the future. So we have to consider that we can make progress as a result of the implementation of, of this bill. Uh, and uh, one idea we had is to, uh, at the request of ARTA, uh, not reimpose uh, the status quo ante until a regulatory impact assessment was made. And you can really try to make the reform permanent rather than going back to where we were before. Uh, and finally, uh, I wonder uh, if you might suggest a monthly report to the Congress as you had with uh, Bayani and Juan on uh, implementation of the reforms envisioned um, by this reform. So with that note, uh, we hope that we can get FDI going up again. The Philippines will become more competitive and we submitted uh, other documentation with our position paper to the committee. Thank you very much for the net, uh, <coughs> for the initiative, uh, along with the co-authors, co uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Forbes. Actually, uh, Sir John, um, we had the word uh, there initially in the initial draft uh, to keep the, uh, the um, streamlining permanent. So we can we can include that in the law as I mean in the in the bill as, long, as soon as we open for the period of amendments and how we can keep that because we still have the ease of doing business act ladies and gentlemen the ease of doing business act will still remain in effect on uh, on on uh, on for example that will be the base law uh, wherein you can have only a maximum of twenty days for national government agencies and uh, three to seven days for uh, local government agencies and uh, simpler applications and requirements no. Um, so that is the base law. This will improve and enhance the law, will make it shorter. Hopefully, it's with permanency. So if we can get everything done within 7 to 10 days, then there's, it doesn't make any sense why we will go back to the 20 days after the emergency period is over, after the granting of these emergency powers is over. Um, so uh, we look into that. That's a good suggestion because I would rather keep it stream streamlined already. Uh, and uh, uh, why revert back to the uh, uh, longer time periods? So, thank you, Mr. Forbes. 
Yes, sir. Senator Gachalian, please go ahead. Mr. Chair, I would like to express my support to what uh, Mr. Forbes, Mr. John Forbes said earlier on the longer time period, Mr. Chair. For example, because in this section two, uh, it says there's notwithstanding any law. So, for example, in Barangay Pira, Mr. Chair, that it's embedded in, um, uh, in the local government code. So, uh, it doesn't matter if your project is 100,000 or 100 billion, you still have to get barangay clearance. And uh, we all know that it takes, takes uh, also takes a long time to get the barangay clearance. So with this law, we can suspend that. So in effect, it will jumpstart the registration and the business operation right away. So, but if it's only a suspension, then after this period of uh, after the calamity, then that uh, prerequisite will be reimposed. So, I would like to, uh, to support the comment of Mr. John Forbes, and maybe we, the committee can study it also. I I agree with all of you, gentlemen, and um, actually, the title of Section Two is Authority of the President to Suspend Requirements for National Local Permits, Licenses, and Certifications and to streamline and expedite the process of the issuance thereof. So the second part is to streamline. So if you get it to streamline it further from 20 days to 10 days, then I guess that will be a permanency. But yes, we will make sure that um, the wording is to that effect, uh, Your Honors. Um, we have with us also the cha the chairman of the, or the secretary. Hi, what was that? Uh, the, I believe Senator Rivilla would like to also give a manifestation before we proceed to the other departments. Senator Bong. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, just a few questions on Section 2 uh, regarding the authority of the President to suspend the requirements for national and local permits, licenses, certifications, and to streamline and expedite the process of the issuance thereof. Ang tanong ko po, Mr. Chair, alin sa mga permits and, at uh, licenses ang pinaka-importante uh, pa pa ang processing time? Uh, Arta, may answer? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, with the due indulgence of the Chair. Thank you, Mr. Senator. Uh, thank you, sir, for raising that question. Uh, earlier, sir, we did uh, present some of the key programs uh, sir, that could be prioritized. Sir, number one is uh, not only on streamlining, uh, Mr. Senator, but also on the uh, adoption po nung uh, online facility that is already available through the ICT, sir. Um, uh, we believe that the creation of the business one-stop shops for all LGUs is uh, in place uh, since nandiyan na ho yung process, kailangan ho nila implement. Um, also, sir, on the uh, central business portal, uh, yung pag-onboard po ng mga government agencies po dyan. And also, uh, I did mention, sir, on the, the trade net, uh, 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 the national single window program, sir, that composed about 73, uh, 75 agencies. Um, so, um, uh, ang awang suggestion po namin, uh, Mr. Senator, uh, these uh, e-governance programs is would be fast tracked by giving uh, one month, three months, and six months na na period. And also, sir, yung uh, Nihimaya program ho na kaninang nabangkit po ni Senator Drilon, sir. Uh, meron na rin po tayong study doon, sir, that we could uh, already uh, request for the implementation if these powers would would actually be given to the OP. So, uh, what will be the repercussions of this reduced uh, processing times to the overall operation of an agency? Um, sir, first, bibilis po sila. Tataas yung confidence po sa ahensya po na yan. Okay. And also, um, maybe some of the uh, issues actually that could also be looked at is because nagko-collecta rin po ng mga fees right now. Doon sa currently, uh, marami ho kasing ibang mga ahensya, Mr. Senator, sir, that we saw that uh, some of them maintain a certain permit kasi merong a pertinent fees po doon sa permit and nagagamit po yun, you know, just revenue raising. So we tell them, um, hindi nyo minimaintain dapat ang permit 
kasi kailangan ninyong fees kasi baliktad eh you you use the fees in order to maintain you know uh you know a regulation going pero you don't use uh, you know a licensing fees for revenue raising so isa po yon Mr. Senator na pwedeng tingnan yung impact nung uh, pagbawas po ng malaki ng mga permits doon sa fees po na mako, na makukuha pero i think sir alongside with the streamlining na gagawin po natin na uh, wholesale streamlining po sir Um, siguro yung uh, leveling po ng plan uh, with the Department of Finance at yung mga ibang finance institution because in the long run, Mr. Senator, we believe as studies would show, pag nag-streamline who, sir, kung ano man yung nawala kung sa regulatory fees, in the few months, pabawi po yan kasi tumataas din, sir, yung investments and everything. So, meron lang siguro transition period, uh, sir, on that, on that regard. Okay, will we be uh, needing uh, additional uh, personnel to implement this? Um, right now, sir, uh, other, biguro, siguro, sir, other than uh, uh, with ARTA or DICT, uh, that I, I would recommend na matulungan din po kasi ang DICT and ARTA is really tandem po yan kasi kami ang streamlining sila po ang uh, automation. Um, yung karagdagan po siguro ng mga technical people who would who would uh, do the, the the automation pwede po natin dagdagan po sila and on the art, art side some experts po na banggit ko kanina ni Senator Drilon on the process improvement maybe we could get uh, more people to help us out pero as for the other agencies uh, Mr. Senator baka baliktad pa po sir ang mangyari pag na-automate at streamline po natin yan yung dating ginagawa po ng isang daang tao baka gawin na lamang po ng uh, sampung tao no so that that could actually be a less burden for the uh, bureaucracy as a whole okay uh, alin sa mga permits and uh, licenses ang pinakakailangan nating i-suspend ang requirements in times of national uh, emergency sir i would say Uh, yung sa LGUs po natin ngayon kasi we have 1,600 uh, local government units, sir. Um, and uh, the local autonomy provision of the local government code normally is being asserted uh, para mag-come up siguro ng sila, sila, yung mga respected LGUs po ng iba't ibang you know, take o pamamaraan despite na meron hong guidelines na inilalabas po ang, ang DILG uh, and our ARTA and DILG together Um, I would say, sir, that uh, make giving this power also. Uh, ang, ang suggestion ko po, unahin po natin, sir, sabihin po natin across all of government agencies, uh, all of LGUs, ito ang proseso, ito ang hihingi natin. Kasi po, para predictable din, Mr. Senator, sir, ang aming suggestion, ang sa aking pananaw dyan, predictable ho, kahit saan ka mag magtayo ng negosyo mo, alam mo kung ano ang, ang prescribed na requirement. So, sir, um, yun po no sir yung yung uh, yung standardizing po ng permits and licenses tanggalin yung mga kalabisan dun sa ibang mga LGUs po and everybody follows that and second sir the second step for that is we can already automate them kasi uniform po yung kanilang proseso and maikabit ho natin dun sa central business portal yun sir ang 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 dapat po talaga mangyari para automated po from from top to bottom sir Okay, uh, what safety measures are in place to ensure that the guarantees of the permits and licenses will be uh, responsibly operated? Safety measures uh, that the reduction, sir, are you, uh, sorry, Mr. Senator, you're pertaining, sir, to the safety measures na hindi po siguro magiging whimsical o right. magiging... Uh -huh. Uh, tanggalin na lang kung anong ma... ma, ma uh, right. I, I, sir, I, uh, kailangan po talaga nabanggit po kanina din ang due process. When, when we when we conduct hearings, we should conduct uh, stakeholders uh, 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 ano po, uh, invite stakeholders also and also the agency before we could come up really with a particular streamlined process. And it could be accelerated in one week's time, araw-araw po mag-hearing mag Uh, para ma matukoy lamang po sir ang isang permits and i think that would uh, give a, a more holistic view as we come up with with uh, permits and processes um now uh, we i would also suggest sir kung pwede rin po no uh, say for example kasi kapag isa pong ahensya 
ay sinabihan po kung wari ng Pangulo o sinabihan po, for example, ng isang body na uh, bibigyan ng Pangulo ng power na yan, tanggalin mo yung permits na yan, ayaw namin yan. Uh, I would suggest that the agency should first comply, obey muna, and then pwede silang mag-apila. Pakita nila na, uh, sir, uh, yung ginagawa ho namin yung streamline process, pero ito po yung aming suggestion, baka pwede nating ibalik. Now, Mr. Senator, I think in that way, binaliktad po natin ang burden of proof. Sila po ang kailangan magpaliwanag kung kailangan ibabalik pa yan or hindi. Uh, kesa ho tayo ang nagsasabi na nakikiusap na tanggalin na yan o hindi. So, yun po kasi uh, na, sa aming hong pananaw kasi because of the national emergency, there is a prima facie uh, uh, situation already that would say na kailangan natin tanggalin yan. And then, Yun, sir, ang isa sa mga safety measures that I could see, Mr. Senator, na pwede pa rin silang, you know, to, to, to petition. At makikita naman po natin, sir, yan siguro in, in the process kung kailangan ibalik. Okay. Uh, actually, I still have a lot of questions, but pero marami pa tayong resource persons. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Chair. I'll just ask questions later on. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Senator Bong. Um, would any of we were would any other agency would like to comment? No, would they like to comment on this particular bill? Uh, we have with us, of course, um, uh, pros special prosecutor Edilberto Sandoval of the Ombudsman. Sir, would you like to comment on the measure granting the president emergency powers for anti red tape? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Good to see you too. <clears throat> uh, we commend the laudable and um, visionary objective of this bill, it provides the businessman how to deal with pressing problems. But I'd, I'd like first to clarify, this bill is applicable only during emergency, national emergency time. Another, that this bill would apply only to executive officers and officials. Okay. I'd like to have a, you know, red tape has been the perennial problem of our citizens ever since. And I think this bill, if it will not totally put a stop, at least it would, it would help our bureaucracy. But I have some inquiries, Mr. Chairman. Three provides consistent with Article Seven, sections 1 and 17 of the Constitution, the revised administrative code and other laws and jurisprudence, the President shall have the authority to suspend or remove upon the determination of a competent body any government official or employee performing us contrary to the President's action. My first question is, who is the competent body? Will it be created by the president? And who uh, will the members and chairman can be appointed by the president? Moreover, uh, it would seem that, uh, with due respect to the proponents of the bill, it would seem that section two can ha, has no is not not this. Uh, we, the, we I feel section two section three. There is no need for section three. And here is my view. All acts of the executive officials and officers. Contrary to Section 3, shall constitute either criminal or administrative uh, liabilities upon which the President can immediately suspend the hearing official. So, this provision, Section 2, uh, Section 3, I'm sorry, Section 3, could be considered a duplication of some laws that uh, we have. Because under the Ombudsman, under the Ombudsman law, whenever 
a violation of the law has been created, has been committed, the ombudsman immediately, through its administrative function, suspend, even by receiving only the complaint of the complainant, on condition that per the allegation there, there is a strong evidence and that the official consent may suspend, may interfere in the investigation. Of course, my subject to better judgment and discretion. But suppose uh, that's it, that is preventive suspension, which can even be imposed, even without hearing. As long as we feel that the official consent <coughs> will have is in the process of interfering with the investigation or uh, changing the documents involved in the case. Uh, however, after the suspense, the preventive suspension, if you, I, I speak of the Ombudsman. The Ombudsman can now proceed with the filing or proceed with the procedure where, with the cases by uh, giving notice to the respondent to file their answer so that we can proceed with the investigation. But with this power of the Civil Service Commission, uh, remove or suspend officials of the Ombudsman, another head, uh, head of the administrative uh, executive agencies. I feel, with all due respect, there is no more no need for Section 3. Uh, as uh, stated by Honorable uh, Rilon, this law, the public act 184, has no penal provision for which the one liable could be charged criminally. And section two deals more with administrative. Thank you very much. Thank you. How may we recognize the minority floor leader? Senator Dulon, please. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you for that comment from uh, our Deputy Ombudsman. Uh, Mr. President, I think it is not, uh, the, in my view, and I think this is the prevailing view, the administrative power to discipline is shared by the President and the Ombudsman. The president can impose preventive suspension. The president can impose suspension as a penalty. And administratively, this is a power shared by the ombudsman and the civil service up to a certain uh, extent. Criminally, criminal jurisdiction, that is the exclusive authority of the ombudsman. And the president cannot, cannot file criminal cases. This is... This is the uh, the cases would be review uh, would it will be the ombudsman who would have the power to review whether the act constitutes a criminal offense punishable by imprisonment. We, where in the case is filed either with the with the, the San Bayan or the ombudsman. So that is the distinction. Administratively, in my opinion, this power to suspend and dismiss. Is a power that is shared by the Ombudsman and the President. That is the only way that we can reconcile the two conflicting powers. Uh, insofar as the criminal aspect is concerned, that is the exclusive purview of the Ombudsman. So that uh, in criminal prosecutions, even the Department of Justice would submit its, recommend its, uh, its findings as a recommendation to the Ombudsman and the Ombudsman can either alter, can modify, can reject, uh, can adapt the report of the Department of Justice insofar as the erring bureaucracy is concerned. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Clearly explained. 
Thank, I thank agree you, Mr. President. With the good senator. Thank you uh, to our dear minority floor leader. Yes, but I feel, no, as, as uh, one of the sponsors of the measure, that Section 3 does no harm. It's just no. an iteration of the president's power because he seems like he doesn't, whenever he comes out exasperated in TV, it seems that he's powerless. I'm sure you watched last night and uh, you can review it again today. He seems powerless no, over this... Uh, these uh, officials, maybe it's just a reiteration to remind him that he is powerful enough to suspend preventively uh, this uh, uh, personnel under him, under the executive, uh, whether appointed or in career, no, uh, career service. Um, of course, with due process. And the competent body, uh, Your Honor, um, to my dear uh, friend, uh, uh, Justice Sandoval, it is creation of the DOJ-led investigative body on the field health. That was within his powers to do so. Uh, am I correct, uh, Your Honors? Uh, and so that is the probably the, 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 the line there, the determination of a competent body. Of course, that could be the ombudsman. It could be the CSC, CSC or maybe a special body created by the president for this task. Uh, your, yes, sir, Minority Floor Leader. Maybe we can even delete upon the determination of a competent body, because this is only for purposes of, uh, of, of assuring due process. But even without this, due process is enshrined in the Constitution, and, uh, yes. and, and the, the phrase upon determination of a competent body is a surplusage and can be interpreted as a limitation on the power of the president. Uh, so we just remove that, uh, as we it's say, line. whether, uh, whether that is this phrase or not, Due process is assured under our constitution. Can I intervene? Yes, uh, yes of course, uh, the prosecutor, please. Without being facetious, Section 3 even restricts the power of the president. See? <laughs> because he has to act upon determination of the competent body. So yes. I think that's one. I, I agree percent. with you. So definitely, as a committee amendment, we shall remove that line determination of a competent body. Thank you. The Thank president you. cannot. But uh, the, to, to, it's uh, good that we leave Section 3, but because it reminds the president. It yes. reminds the president that you have that power. Use it. Yeah. Don't say yeah. to the senators and the congressmen. Don't pass it to us anymore. You have that power. Use, please use it. So, um, if uh, Senator Recto, would you like to comment on anything? Um, because of, So that we can proceed with the technical working group and then uh, hopefully the committee report so that I can sponsor this on Monday. Afternoon, um, gentlemen. I, yes, uh, just a few items uh, uh, to our chairman, our majority leader. Um, yeah. oh. I was listening attentively to the discussion earlier. No? So, in effect, what we are saying here is that one, there's nothing new that we are giving the president here to begin with, that all are under existing laws. Uh, with regard to the power to suspend or remove, uh, correct? Yes, insofar as the power over the bureau bureaucracy uh -huh. are concerned, uh, yes, we are correct. Says. That power is uh, is enshrined in our constitution, and uh, uh, we do not yeah, have to take it. But we are giving it be, it should be as Senator Jolon Sandalina po. Uh, may we ask uh, Director Nicolas Lutero uh, to please? Uh, Put his computer on silent. You might incriminate yourself. Nandito yung ombudsman. Okay. <laughs> Director, please uh, mute yourself. Okay. Okay. Just a so response to our uh, 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 president. Okay. Yes, Section 3 does not grant the president any new additional power. Thank it you. Is only a reiteration and a recognition of his power. As, go. Okay, so uh, the, the new power granted is the one on section uh, on two. Section, uh, section three, on section two. Okay, which gives the president the power and authority to remove licenses which may be required by law. Um, okay, uh, let, let, so we're done with section three on section two. Okay. Is there anything new, any new powers we're giving the president under Section 2 that he cannot do under the Administrative Code or any other law? Uh, well, if the Administrative Code or any law says 
you must secure a mayor's permit. Uh, that's the law. Without any authority from Congress, the president may not suspend that. Okay. With regard to the local government code, just a question on this issue, huh? because we're, we're including local governments here, no? So uh, Congress passed the local government code. And now the, or let, let, let me take a step backward. The president has authority over all permits, licenses in the executive bureaucracy at the national level. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct, sir. Yes. So essentially, there is nothing new here that we are giving the president when it comes to suspending requirements for national licenses, certifications, to streamline, so on and so forth, in the executive department at the national level. At the national level, in the executive department, the power of the president to suspend a permit or to suspend a permit uh, uh, is governed by law. In other yes. words, if, if the uh, charter or the enabling act of the Civil Aeronautics Authority of the, of the Philippines says that before you can use the airport, you must secure the clearance of the CAB, the president cannot just remove that without the of law. Okay. So in effect, we, we are granting special powers to the president here. Yes, sir. Okay. And will there be a limited or a, a period of time that this will be in effect? In times of national emergency, it's placed in Section 1, I think. I did not see that. Uh, well, section. Huh? well I, it's not in any of the sections. No, no, well, <laughs> well, it's done. Yes. Okay. And then, please, sir, on Section yes. 2, on line 9, in times of national emergency, online. Okay. 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 So, okay. So today we are in a national emergency until September of next year. Is that correct? That's how I understand it. Sir. Yes. That's so in effect, in effect, he can only exercise his powers until September of next year. That's correct, sir. Based on his proclamation. Yes, sir. Okay, and uh, I just want to add for the record that it would be good to have a limitation as well so that Congress can review. Yeah, well, uh, let's address the committee. You ask yes, the yes. chairman, I have no problems with that. Yes, okay, thank you for that. Um, I, will re I, I do recall that in Bayanihan 2, uh, we did a lot of streamlining as well in Bayanihan too. Is that correct? Well, yeah. yes. The most uh, popular of which is the suspension of all the permits for cell towers. Correct. Uh, uh, but also other regulatory issues. Eh? We include yes, yes. Too, the, no? the competition. Or, this was uh, permits, if I may, uh, gentlemen. We removed the permit. Uh, we streamlined uh, and gave the president the power to streamline those. Uh, what we call. Uh, admit uh, the projects under NEDA. Um, these are the flagship projects. Correct. Yes, so we include, across the board. Yes. Yeah. We put uh, that there, including the Philippine Regulatory Commission. Yes, yes, yes. Philippine Competition yes. Commission. Yes. 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 yes, But we did provide also certain exemptions, if I'm not mistaken, on environmental clearances. Is that correct? If I recall, we did provide. Uh, limitations as well. Yes. I, I'm not the principal author of the version, but you, yes. you were there, uh, Senator Rex. Yes, you correct, correct. On environment and health, if I'm not mistaken, if I do recall, no? Okay. Uh, Halimbawa, can the president suspend uh, the requirement for an ECC? In my view, yes. He can under this bill? Yes, he can. Okay. He can. Of okay. course, politically, he has to defend that. <laughs> but if you just ask me uh, legally, under Section 2, my yes. view is he can. Yes, he can. Okay. So, in effect, that is his lookout politically. Yes, yes. That okay. is his lookout politically. Okay. Can the president suspend also the requirement for, let's say, uh, on health issues, FDA requirements? 
Yes. Uh, if yes, not, we believe so. Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, you look at uh, line uh, 15 on page 2. It says suspend or waive the requirements in securing such permits, licenses, etc., etc. Yes, yes, correct. Okay. Okay. So I'm just I'm just thinking, should there be limitations? Eh? I'm just uh, thinking out no? with regard to a certain health, uh, environment, and uh, I think by any end we also included certain labor issues, if I'm not mistaken. Well, these are policy policy yeah. considerations and policy calls which yeah. uh, the Senate uh, or Congress, yeah. as a collective body, would have to decide. Yes. yes. Yeah. Thank you for that. I have no further questions. Uh, I just wanted to understand exactly what we're doing here uh, so that at the appropriate time, if need be, uh, propose certain amendments just in case uh, uh, to our colleagues and to all our resource persons. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Ralph. Uh, what we can do is before we tackle it on the floor, we can have, uh, or I can sponsor this, and then we can have a caucus so to discuss. Because the uh, idea when we sponsor this uh, and we file this Senator Recto is actually to keep it very simple. Uh, let's not go into the nitty gritty of each department because if we do that, we can have a bill that's as thick as a Bible uh, if we look at all the permits, licenses, and certifications. Uh, so, uh, we wanted to keep it very, very simple. But yes, uh, definitely, it's a policy decision that we have to make. And uh, we can discuss this uh, during the period of caucus, uh, during a caucus, before the period of amendments. So uh, any other uh, colleague of ours, as well as a government uh, agency, would like to comment on the measure? So if there being none, uh, we'd just like to remind the, the body that um, we would like to... Uh, now ask the secretary to prepare through a technical working group the yes <clears throat> before i forget my staff has just reminded me there might be some private sector comments still um we heard from the foreign chambers may we ask from the uh philippine chamber of commerce if there are local chambers uh, heading uh either the msmes or large industries real estate real estate well, there's a real estate group and a telco group. Uh, we would like to give you two minutes if you want uh, to be recognized. Yes. Yes, uh, Senator Jalan? Well, yes, there is a position paper filed by, uh, uh, I think, by uh, the uh, pharmacy, by those involved in medicine. Yes, yes, the pharmaceutical yes. companies. Pharmaceutical yes. companies. Uh, we submit, uh, Mr. Chair, that this is the proposal will change the nature of the law. They are calling for the suspension, granting the president the power to suspend policies, which is completely different from the power yeah. to suspend. Yes, I agree. Policies. So uh, I don't think we can consider. It may complicate, <clears throat> may complicate things more. Yeah. Yes, Mr. President. I agree to our minority floor leader. So. Maybe we can just request for the position papers. We'll rev the, the committee will review it and um, will act upon their, um, of course, their letters and uh, look at the recommendations. Before we go, Director General uh, Belgica, you want to be recognized? Yes, sir, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. I we just I just want to say, sir, that we took note uh, the manifestation of Senator Villar and Senator Drillon on the matters. We would be giving our uh, report on on the on this thing, sir. Uh, just want to say, sir, and thank you again, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, we always appreciate hearing from your advisor, your wisdom. Thank you, sir. The chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yeah. Justice. Of uh, course, please. May I just uh, inject. Recognized. May I just inject. In Section 6, Effectivity, the Act shall take effect upon its publication in the Official Gazette and in a newspaper of general circulation. May I propose to change and to or, because this is due national emergency. Okay. Thank you for that. We take note of that, uh, Your Honor. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, uh, Justice Sandoval, we really appreciate your time spent with us. I know you're very busy. Uh, I, mean, I, I just wanted to, please. I just wanted to greet our justice, uh, Kababayang Kuyan. Hi, Senator. Bye. 
Dahil Taka susunod po kayo sa Batangas, sa Justice. Pabini ako. Ah, mabini ako. Oh, very good. <laughs> Justice, mabuhay po kayo. Thank you. Buhay, buhay. Thank you, DG Jeremiah. Salamat po. Keep up the good work. Remember, before before we close this, I'd just like to say I think there's a communications problem between uh, the office and uh, the office of the president. I think you really need to reach out to the president, tell him what the powers are under the law, uh, remind him his powers as well. Uh, I, have you set a meeting already uh, for a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the president? We already requested, Mr. Chair, a uh, urgent uh, briefing for the president. Uh, we already sent, submitted it. Yes, sir. Very good. That's good. That's good. And I'd like to thank my colleagues, uh, Senator Frank Julon. Thank you, sir, for helping me today. And uh, uh, this is our baby, together with Senator Bong Revilla, Senator Ralph Recto, baby din natin ito, Ralph, uh, for Senator Sherwin Gachalian. And earlier, we had Senator Bongo. And of course, our principal, uh, Ma'am Cynthia Villar, Senator Cynthia Villar. Thank you din po. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, to all those of ARTA that attended, all government agencies that had attended, my apologies that we were not able to recognize you all. But uh, this is a simple, simple uh, measure that we want to pass and uh, we don't really want to complicate it uh, too much. Um, and it's quite self-explanatory. So with that, I ask now the committee secretary to prepare the committee report uh, with the, uh, of course, the suggestions made and carried by this committee. Uh, maraming maraming salamat po to my dear colleagues. See you at uh, 3 o'clock. Mabuhay po kayo. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 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 Th